Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to Coral Viper, the newest update to Company of Heroes 3. If you're watching this video, the update is already live, adding new battle groups, new maps, uh, new features like map veto and surrender, and a lot of balance changes that we're gonna get into in this video. This is a two hour video, um, so you're free to listen to this in a podcast style, uh, but I brought in Hunter Dak. As many of you know, he's been a good friend of the channel and a close friend of mine for many months now. Uh, one of the most insightful and, and most skilled players I've ever met in Company of Heroes. Uh, so I really do hope you guys enjoy this. We break this down piece by piece, giving our insight and perspective. Uh, go ahead and give Hunter Dak a follow on Twitch. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. And let's jump into the video. All right, Hunter, are you there? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. How are you doing, man? I'm fine. How are you? Very good. Good to see you, man. Good to see you too. So what's what's been your opinion on the latest meta, the, the most recent meta that we're now ending here as we go into this new patch? Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts overall on the last meta we played. Well, uh, the most annoying thing or the most uh, uh, meta was in that game, the, that previous patch was the uh, Dingo. Yeah, uh, Dingo was, um, to be honest, uh, on all scales, like all modes, 1v1, 2v2, 3v3, 4v4. It's, uh, I don't know, the armor maybe, so you can't kill it without proper uh, unit. Right. Yeah, I, I it would, does I would agree. Damage. Yeah, so I would say... I would say for me, the, the Dingo was probably overbuffed, especially when you consider how much how easily it beat the 250, how it even contested with, with the 221 from the Wehrmacht, which was kind of crazy yeah. to see. Yeah, the 221 had uh, a, a fuel cost that is like, so Dingo can kill it very easily, while the 221 is costing, you know, it's required tier two to be built, it's required to be, uh, it's required as well as fuel, so right. logically, it's to, it's supposed to be um, in a higher tier than the dingo. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And what do you think about the Axis versus Allies matchup? Did you feel like in in large team games, three v threes, four v fours, that the Allies had an edge, or was it pretty even? It's uh, um, well, if we talk, if we um, let's say. Um, uh, we, if we talk about the match, the match is uh, distributed or uh, has a three section, early, middle, late. So usually the early and the middle phase is quite, let's say, if we exclude Dingo, it's kind of balanced, kind of balanced. Right. But at the, at the end of the game, at the late game phase, it's uh, leaning forward to the uh, allies side. Interesting. Because allies, yeah, allies have uh, quite good tanks uh like for example a tanky tanks uh matilda m3 grants uh, uh easy eight also right. it has what 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 i call it the weapon of mass destruction like the carpets uh, the uh the naval bombardment which which is uh right which is yeah yeah you don't really see that kind of off map power from the axis and, and it's ironic because as you said, as the game goes later, the allies get stronger. Traditionally in Co, I feel like the Axis were the ones who had a slower start but got stronger yeah, over time. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, usually in the franchise Co 1 and Co 2, it was the allies' duty to prevent the Axis from being into the late game. Right. Now it's it's uh, the ally, it's the Axis. Now we need to finish the game very fast before the Matilda and the uh, you know, the heavy tanks come from the uh, ally side. Because right. usually, you know, what if, what's, what's your, what's an, as an Axis point of view, what do you have uh, versus those? You have Panzer three, Panthers, uh, in, 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 if, if you talk about Wehrmacht, and if you are talking about DAC, you usually have almost nothing because yeah. the, like T4 have P3s, and if you want to go for a Tiger, it will be overwhelmed by the uh, multiple tanks that have been produced by the uh, allies at that time. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. And I've heard Relic already talk about how they want to give Axis a stronger late game. Um, so as we jump into these patch That's notes nice. here, yeah, it'll be really interesting to see how they address this issue um, with the Axis in particular. Um, but let's take it from the top. We're going to start with unit attack behavior. 
I'll read through it and then I'd love to get your perspective on this uh, to start and then we'll get into the balance as well. All right. So unit attack behavior, we have changed unit attack behavior. This should make players feel like units go idle less often for reasons they weren't aware of while improving on the unit attack behavior seen in previous titles. So before this update, units that had an attack order on a target that got destroyed will go idle. If a unit enters the fog of war briefly and reappears again, the unit keeps the target and check. Oh, and chases. Okay. And chases it. Interesting. Yeah, usually, you know, uh, if you remember uh, like three patches ago or four patches ago, where when when where like when the enemy unit uh, shoots from the fog of war, it's kind of spotted a spotlight, so right. you can put an artillery there, and they. Um, uh, deleted that by using the fog of war uh, like uh, permanently on the uh, location. So now, uh, what happened after that is that uh, the fog of war was really persistent. So units, uh, like your units, really need to see the enemy to uh, the enemy units to shoot at. Right. So when they change it, so when they change it now, it, it's it's really you know I like I really like this change because you know sometimes like for example if you have an anti tank and you shoot through the tank and the tank goes uh, in the fog of war, so mm -hmm. the anti tank you know logically it will stop, but after right. it reappears re reappear ag again, like in a slightly period, like for one or two seconds, it's going to be a re reappear again because he tried to like. Go back in the. It's kind of abuse from the player to right. uh, go put push and then back to the fog of war. So now after this change, I think I think that the units will uh, have the selected target to be, selected target to be shot at again. Interesting. Okay. So n now units that had an attack order on a target that got destroyed will go to the maximum weapon range of the last seen location. If a unit enters the fog of war and reappears again, the unit will go to the maximum weapon range of the last seen location. If the enemy unit yeah. gets obscured by smoke, it will still use maximum weapon range, meaning that the unit won't run inside the smoke. Yeah, yeah that's also kind of... We had an issue where, like, especially if we are playing as allies, and uh, the allies usually have a smoke. Dak has a smoke. Uh, Wehrmacht with the mechanized has a smoke. So, when like when you have an anti-tank unit that's being like uh, sh uh, using a move attack on a certain location, and uh, the, the smoke appears that the, the units kept moving through the fog of war or the smoke. And yeah. it's kind of you need a, like more micro to it. It's uh, more frustrating for the player. Right. Yeah. So I think this is just going to really improve the the overall interactions between players and 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 allow the fog of war to work properly. Right. I mean, it's it's a good yeah. change overall. Okay. So yeah. mo moving on to weapon upgrade refunds, altered the way partial weapon upgrade refunds work. They will no longer allow you to queue partial upgrades due to selecting unit multiple squads with different inventory capacities. However, this means that you, that weapon upgrades are always paid in full when put in production. A squad will issue a refund of 50% of the value of the upgrade should it lack the capacity to receive all weapons. Okay, so we saw this earlier and it was a bug, right? From my understanding? Yeah, yeah, it was kind of a bug. Like if you select multiple weapons with multiple packages, for example, uh, the cost of, uh, you know... Uh, uh, for example, the cost of uh, uh, AT boys is 50 ammunition. Yeah. So usually, if you upgrade the the um, scout uh, package, uh, scout package for another uh, section, and you select it with uh, an idle, another idle section, an unpacked section, so yeah. you can take one one AT guard, one AT uh, rifle on it with with at the cost of 25. Uh, Right. Uh, ammunition. I so that. I think that bug, yeah. So I think that bug is fixed. Okay, that's a good change. And then moving on to multiplayer balance. So this is the bread and butter of what we want to get to. Exactly. Um, exactly. Yeah, but to start off here, it says experience rewarded against veteran units. So damaging or killing killing veteran units will reward more experience. We want players uh -huh. to have more opportunity to catch up as a lower veteran rank unit generally struggles more uh -huh. than they should against 
enemies at a higher veterancy. So overall, what do you think about this mechanic? Should units with lower veterancy, if they perform well against higher veterancy units, should they vet faster, in your opinion? I think yes, because, you know, sometimes for, uh, you know, still, you know, the game is a strategic, is an RTS game, and there is some RNG on it. Right. So, uh, for example, if you happen to have a bad situation where you lost some of your own veteran unit and your uh, your opponent had your uh, his uh, units alive, all his veteran units alive, it will be, and, and you are producing another unit, for example, especially we are talking here about the infantry fight. So usually if you have a new rifleman versus... Uh, Let's say Panzer Grenadiers uh, mm -hmm. from Wehrmacht or Panzer Grenadiers from the DAC, yeah. and he's uh, and and the Panzer Grenadier is um, Vet three, and your rifleman is you outrun your you outrun the Panzer Grenadier with a grenade or some sort of it give a chance for the uh, yeah. for for you to have uh, to to come back to the uh, to the fight like right. you don't feel that that it's that it's useless to make another rifleman or another units because the enemy units are more veteran. I think it's yeah. it's fair, man. It's, it's fair smart. because if the yeah, it's very fair and very smart because if the enemy lost his vet three unit, it's his mistake and he need to be like punished on that and you right. know the transfer of the veterancy to the uh good micro player yeah exact micro is the right word it creates that n uh, extra layer of micro and interaction between the two and i think what's interesting like you said a grenade is very important in this scenario because right here in the patch notes it says bonus experience rewarded per kill on veteran units not necessarily damage um to, to enemy veteran units so i think th the key is as a player with lower veterancy units you have to be smart on how you're interacting with those higher veterancy units, whether it's grenades or maybe you have two lower veterancy units engaging one veterancy unit so that you can maybe yeah. get an edge. So um, there are ways now that you can gain bonus experience and be rewarded um, and try to come back in the game. It's a comeback mechanic uh, overall, it's which I comeback. think is good. Exactly. It's a comeback mechanic. Yeah, yeah, I agree. You know, that's, that's well... You described it very, very well. It's a kind of comeback, give you a proper chance that you don't lose hope when right. you lost like your veteran unit and and for for some cause that you know. Yeah, I think it's important that games don't just snowball, and there are opportunities and mechanics uh -huh. available. Uh -huh. Yeah, it deletes the snowball, or 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 at least uh, delays the progression right. of the snowball. Yeah. Okay, so moving to heavy machine guns, we're tuning up the suppression of heavy machine guns to shorten the amount of time it takes for a unit to become pinned. It took too long for a unit to become pinned while in the open, and the number of counters yeah. to heavy machine guns increased over multiple patches. So your thoughts overall uh -huh. on this for both sides, well, allies and seen, Axis? It's, you know, uh, uh, it's, you know, if you read the uh, both sides are, are an increase for, for all of the uh, LMGs that there, uh, the heavy machine guns that are they are that are here. Yeah, uh, I think it's a proper thing in my opinion because uh, you know sometimes when sometimes I've seen in my own eyes like a, a rifleman or a Panzer Grenadier, usually it's, it crawls under the fire of the machine guns until it reaches the uh, side uh, where it can shoot uh, his grenade. I think that's kind of uh, not logically approved, so to right. the increase of the suppression, right? Especially uh, like the vicar, suppression. right? Like the vicar was so especially the vicar, yeah. It's yeah. Usually so the vicar is the is a uh, yeah yeah. It has the the it's the only AMG that has a more damage and less uh, suppression. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's good, especially as they said, they're adding so much indirect to the game over time. Um, that, that machine guns need to have some kind of resilience and, and effectiveness on the front line. Um, so overall, I think it's a good change. We'll see. Uh -huh. um, but I think it's it's positive. So height combat bonus, I think this is a really good change from, from what I can tell, but no longer negate cover as it made high ground multi-level garrisons too powerful and ignored one of the major mechanics of Company of Heroes. 
However, we yeah. are increasing the accuracy bonus provided to still be meaningful. So height bonus no longer ignores the cover of the opponent. Height bonus accuracy increased from 10% to 25%. What's your thoughts on this? Well, uh, uh, let's uh, face it, you know, you know, sometimes when there is a fight and you are on the low ground, but you are really on a heavy cover or you are, yeah. you know, like building a sandbag to protect yourself. So usually the, the height, the height, uh, the units that are in high ground now, now it's, it's, it's make more logic and increase the percentage, but not neglect the, the, um, the me the, the 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 franchise mechanic that which is the like red shield the yellow yeah. shield and the green shield it's the franchise sign you know it's the right. franchise symbol so now it's 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 look fair you know before that it looked like whenever you you are on the low ground it's you know, for me when i play i just retreat because it's it's useless to fight right. uh, someone who is on high ground. Now it's it give you a bit more chance of resilience to, exactly. you know, to stay there. Yeah, and it's intuitive. Like, th why should the cover mechanic just all of a sudden become obsolete once someone has the high ground? Like, it yeah. doesn't make sense yeah. for new players or for doesn't players in general. Sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, good point. Okay, so light and medium mortars. Mortars were doing too much damage in a short period of time, which made it very difficult to use units like heavy machine gun teams. I agree. Were, yeah, yeah. yeah. Forced to retreat upon being barraged. So, yeah, we saw this where mortars could just force MGs back. or Not or, only MGs, man. You know, some players like make, make multiples, multiple indirect units, especially if we are talking about duck with yeah. the house truck. Or some, uh, or uh, even some uh, U.S. forces, U.S. players that make uh, a lot of mortars or mortar pits. Right. Where, where you, where when you play your infantry, you can't even stay put, man. You, you just can't <laughs> stay stand still, man. You need to constant move. And if you yeah. read the patch note, it says the barrage cooldown between shot and increased from zero to point five. Which is uh, give you a slight breathe to to move, you know, right. because you know usually before that, if the enemy had or your opponent had uh, three mortars, it would be impossible for you to stay put, man. Yeah, I agree. It, it's the worst feeling when you're just constantly being barraged by indirect, and and yeah. there's no yeah. stability in the game, or or you don't even have time to think. You're just being. Blood, yeah yeah you know? it's, it's it was it was like i don't know it was so messy man yeah yeah i agree it's now good they're, it, they're controlling now it that feels yeah now it feels more um uh, uh balanced to me yeah okay so mines were too efficient at killing unit models and infantry squad squads we're reducing this to better reflect the cost effectiveness of mines and prevent mines from being able to one shot certain squads like the Pioneer or the Scout. So unit model damage mm. limit decreased from three to two. I think that's a good change overall. Yeah, that's a good change, especially, you know, for for the units that are with the three member squad, uh, like the uh, the US uh, Scout or the uh, Wehrmacht engineer with the three yeah. models, you know. Right. Sometimes it happened that when you send your engineer or your scout to capture the corner uh, point, and there is a happen to has a mine there, and it will be wiped out. So basically, limiting to two, it's uh, it's more uh, more of a good balance. Yeah, it gives you time to retreat and everything. And, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so recovery is becoming significantly faster, but in exchange, it's slightly more expensive and, and recovers vehicles in a more vulnerable state. So health restored upon recovery changed from 25 to 10%. Resources required for recovery, 50 to 40. Vehicle recovery time sped up from 36 for light vehicles and 73 for other vehicles. And 17 for light, 30 for medium. Heavy vehicle wrecks mm -hmm. now need 55 seconds to recover. And health increased from 220, okay, 220 to 400. So the one uh, game that I can we, remember we yeah. played, Hunter. Um, yeah. We had a large game on Magnano Gap. You remember? And, exactly. And, yeah. I remember. Versus so what do you no think? weapon and ban style. Yes. Uh, well, uh, you know, if we, if we, you know, uh, if we, if if you, if we talk about that, 
you know, we've seen uh, really scarce and rare times when we see uh, recovery vehicles that uh, uh, get uh, wreckage from the battlefield. Right. Maybe because of the time, man. You know, waiting for 73 seconds to have a, a vehicle, it's really long time. Like one minute, and it's it's uh, like we this unit is really uh, underused. The recovery vehicles from both sides really yeah. underused. I agree with that. So basically, so basically, this change give you the risk. It's true that they they reduce the time, they reduce the cost, but uh, they make for the health restored the, from of of the vehicle from twenty five percent to ten percent. So usually, so. Uh, now the the wrecked vehicle that came to alive, yeah. Uh, now it's more vulnerable to be dead again, and you will lose yeah. your resources that you put on it. So okay. you really need to now. You know this change give you the opportunity to recover fast if your enemy made made a bad push on your uh, land and his, right. he lost his tanks. But if in, in if in if the push was in the front line, it will be too much risk for you. So yeah. now the recovery vehicle will be more used, but with very caution. It's very good. It's su such a it's good very point. Good so basically, yeah. basically, the player who has the recovery vehicle ha is going to be better rewarded now because he's able to more quickly recover the vehicle. But the exactly. time the timing has to be right. He has to know exactly. Because the health is reduced, he has to get out quickly, and he has to understand uh -huh. the, the timing of, uh -huh. is this a safe time to exactly. recover? Because if it is, I can exactly. get out quick enough. Yeah, I think it's that's a fantastic also, point. Also, it's a, it's, a, it's a punish for the opponent. For example, if you have like two Hellcats or, or like three tanks or, or you push with your, especially in team games, or you push with your, your allies or your mate, right. and uh, it happens that you lost your, like from the f three tanks or four tanks there, you lost two of them on the enemy battlefield for, uh, because of a wrong push or a loiter or whatever that happened to you. So yeah. at that point, you need you really need to destroy your own wreckage, or your tanks will be a plunder for your enemy. Yeah, so, so good. I'm I'm really curious to see how how this is utilized in the new meta in the in the new patch, especially with mm -hmm. vehicle wrecks being even more relevant now with the plunder mechanic from the DAC. So, um, very uh, that, very yeah. interesting. Okay. Also, if you notice, heavy vehicle wreckage health increase from 220 to 400. So the heavy vehicles now, uh, it's going to be more harder for you to destroy by using indirect or anti-tank. So right. your own wreckage will be uh, uh, a burden for you too. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So they're trying to keep them keep them on the on the field a little bit more. That's cool. Uh -huh. I, I like it a lot. Okay. So. Moving on to sandbags, are, they're receiving a yeah. significant increase in their build times as it was too easy to lay down heavy cover even when the squad was under fire. So sandbag yeah, I've build seen time. That a lot. Yeah. So build time standardized to 10 seconds was previously three to five. That's very fast. Coastal reserves increased from 1.5 to eight. Coastal reserves Wait. was a hack, man. That was so fast. Yeah, coastal coastal reserve. First of all, as you said, it's a hack, and secondly, you know, coastal reserve. Uh, the only the only good way to 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 see an efficient coastal reserve unit in the battlefield is that they are in a cover. So yeah. basically, it's 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 just like the name. It's a defensive unit. So if it's not in the in the in the in the in the cover it will not work properly right so uh, i've seen a lot where many players play the sandbank in front of an mg or in front of uh, multiple units that are shooting the coastal reserve and yet your coastal reserve still building the bags like nothing on their head and this is really a good change you know from 1.5 to 8 seconds it, it will make you think twice before you build sandbank yeah, it's still faster than the standard 10 seconds from it's other still, units. But, exactly, exactly. Yeah. It's still, still faster, but it's still not 1.5 second, man. It's like yeah. it's like four times today. It's like four times, man. <laughs> yeah, and, and like you said, players should need to anticipate and prepare to put cover. 
they shouldn't be able to just put cover down in in, in immediate danger, right? There there should be some kind of premeditation and and strategic thought put into, okay, I have time now to put down cover before I engage the yeah. enemy. I understand the map. Yeah. I know this is an important part of the map. So uh -huh. it's going to make players more cautious and more strategic about how they put cover down on the map. And I think that's important overall. Mm -hmm. Okay. So not, 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 yeah, not really, not really, you know, I see an MG, okay, then I will put an, an, a yeah, cover here. Exactly. So it's like, uh, yeah, so exactly. that, 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 that thing will be, will be, you know, evaporated. There is no more thing that you can see uh, someone who's building a, a sandbag in front of an MG or a units that are shooting him. Right, exactly. Yeah, so uh, oh, let's go on to snipers. We're reducing the cost and increasing the health of snipers to make these investments less risky due to numerous counters available to various factions in the form uh -huh. of light vehicles. We will continue oh, monitoring oh. the unit in terms of durability, but the health of the sniper increased from 80 to 100 and manpower uh -huh. costs reduced from 340 to 300. So one thing I would like to say real quick is... Yeah. They make a good point. Company of Heroes 3 has more light vehicles than yeah, Co. Really 1 and more Co. Light 2. Vehicles. Yeah, I mean, they hit the battlefield right away. The game is much faster yeah. than the previous games in, in the franchise. Um, exactly. You yeah. have Weasel, you have Dingo, you have 254, you have Jeep, you have, right. you know, that's, that's from the start. Right. That's really from the start. Yeah. So I, the snipers were just totally irrelevant. I mean, they they served almost no purpose uh, in yeah, games. Yeah, they were, there, but they were there, but not there. They they were in the in the bad. <laughs> they were in the standards units, but nobody plays with them. Right. Because of that. So you think this is enough of a change to to get them on online? I think not. I think not. Still, still the yeah, still the 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 uh, the light vehicles have uh, a damage bonus on the sniper i still one i still think that the 100 as a health is not enough and we will see also yeah we'll see about that right yeah it will be in very interesting to see at least in the first couple of weeks we'll, we'll see some experimentation which will be cool um all right moving to stealth detection we're giving players more options mm -hmm. to deal with camouflage units by designating proper detection units and adding detection to most vision based abilities Factions will have access to both infantry and vehicle-based detectors that are able to spot camouflage units from a greater distance. However, detector units will not be able to spot up to their maximum sight range. This allows camouflage units some chance to avoid detectors and make use of their advantage. So some interesting counterplay here. What do you think about this new uh, mechanic or added well, mechanic? Uh Partly, I think this stealth detection changed because of the Esponage uh, uh, new battle group for, from the Duck. Yeah. Because the, the whole idea of the Duck uh, new battle group is about being stealth. So right. if you don't put a counter on it, it will be really, really overpowered and like unbroken. It's right. really broken and you can't, you can't treat it. There is no counter for it. So right. this is the first. This is the first thing in in a point of view as an allies player. So you need uh, changes in the stealth detection. Uh, right. On the other hand, uh, as an as an access player, uh, many uh, uh, yeah allies unit have a stealth. For example, you can uh, make uh, your airborne stealth. You can make uh, like imagine if you have a an, a two airborne units with bazooka, they are stealth, and right. suddenly. Uh, uh, attack your 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 vehicle, and you don't know where they came from because you don't have a proper stealth unit. Right, another right. another thing, you have a commandos and you have the LMG commandos from the British uh, uh, battle group, uh, in which also uh, 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 they have a higher, very very DPS against infantry. That's their own. That's their standard DPS, and they get extra bonuses when they are camouflage. So uh, it was very hard for the allies, for the Axis player, to come back uh, to their fight when the allies uh, had the map control or the or the or at least the, that side control. Because whenever you try to push, you will be surprised by by a lot of units that are camouflage that you don't know about. Interesting. So I think that's. It's really, it's really good to have. Also, 
Also, the the axes, uh, you know, the 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 eagles with the shrieks that come from uh, uh, tier two, tier three, uh, tier two, sorry, tier yeah. two of the Wehrmacht. That also was a camouflaged unit that was really also uh, annoying for for the allies' medium medium vehicles sure. like the Greyhound, yeah, that, uh, or the Stewards. Uh, that's also give a chance for the allies player. It's it's a benefit for both sides because both sides have uh, stealth units and both sides really suffer from the uh, stealth units that are available on the both sides. So right. it's very very important to have. Uh, it's it's true that it give uh, another micro to the player, but uh, let's be fair. That's that's yeah. you, that, that's you really need it. You know. Right. So yeah, once again, as you're describing, we have a better counterplay on both sides. There's this interplay between both both camouflage and detector units where the player with the better micro, the better preparation, the better positioning is going to be rewarded yep. for those things. And that's yep, important. Yep, yep. Well, you said you said quite good thing. The better preparation. If you don't prepare yourself, if your right. enemy had if your enemy had a camouflage units and and you didn't uh, like uh, invest in 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 the scout units, right? Then it's your fault. Exactly. Yeah, th there's a counterplay. So British forces, the Dingo Scout car, the Humber armored car, infantry sections upgraded with the Recce package. That's going to be your your overall detector units um, that you're going to need. If you see the other uh, outlines, it's called detection range of twenty five. This is like a title for these units. You right. see? Yeah. Yeah, so U.S. forces, it's going to be the 4x4 truck, the scouts uh -huh. and their variations, so the Pathfinder or the Artillery Observer, so that's good to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. But not not that much uh, scouting for the U.S. forces, but these units are readily available from the very beginning, so you're going to have this option. Yeah. yeah, it's good. It's very good. Uh, DAC, we have the Krodschutzen motorcycle team, the 254 reconnaissance tractor, and the Panzer so the Pioneers. Panzer Pioneers. Is that through an upgrade or is that? Is no, that just I standard? think uh, I think I think uh, uh, they made the four standard units that come from every faction as a scout by itself. Interesting. So the scout, the the engineer, the uh, the sapper, and the another engineer, like the deck engineer and the Wehrmacht engineer, oh, yeah, the sapper right. and the scout. So the four basic units that that's already in there from the start, all of them now is a scout unit by itself. Okay, so that's going to be your your first, I think, your best uh, detector in terms yeah. of in terms of front line, right? The most front line exactly. detector should be these these early tier one units because you can always retreat them. They're not as vulnerable as a Humbert armored car or a Dingo Scout car, which don't have the max detection range, right? So um, that's. That's interesting. Okay, so let's go to Vermont. We have the Kettenkrad recon vehicle, the 221 scout car, the Pioneer, as we Pioneer. just talked about. So these these early units, the, the engineers, Pioneers, they're going to be the most the most valuable now, I think, in, in terms of... Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Especially for, especially those, you know, for the, 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 the scout from the U.S. forces and the engineer from the Wehrmacht usually is a cheap unit and some, some like, let's say some yeah, players just neglect the importance of these units because they are right. not a combatant unit. Yeah, not like the Sapper or the the Dark, uh, uh, Panzer Pioneers. Right. Now, now after this change and the stealth capabilities, now people really need to think that I don't want to lose my scout. I don't want to lose my three member engineer. Right. I, I I need to keep them because if there is a stealth unit there, I'm gonna be punished. Yeah, I, I love that added utility and relevance. I think it's cool, very cool to see. So flares detect enemies up to their full sight range. Mobile units, general detection uh -huh. range increased from 10 to 12.5. And then recon planes detect enemies up to their full sight range, while loiters detect enemies within the loiter area. I, I love that. I think that's very cool overall. So Yeah, that's, good. that's very nice. Yeah, good just changes. good changes. Uh, that, that. Yeah. Good changes, yeah. I agree. All right, so this is a really interesting one. Stick, sticky bombs, AT grenades, and Panzerfaust. We want infantry to be better at zoning out vehicles and prevent units like AT guns from being overrun. So we are reducing the number of infantry-based snares it takes to slow and destroy vehicles. Furthermore, 
the veterancy will play a more important part in keeping these abilities relevant at the later stages of the game through increased power. Uh -huh. So this change is being uh -huh. made so it's harder to overwhelm AT defenses with vehicles and prevent opponents from immediately ending the game by killing dedicated... Yeah. Oh, this is so smart. And overrunning the rest yeah. of the army. So Hunter, you know, you know this all too I well. Yeah, yeah, I face that a lot of times. You know, it's just like you know before I I read before I read this, uh, you know, it was the 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 ultimate target of any player is to destroy, especially at the let's say from the at the, at the late of the medium phase to the to the late phase to the to the late of the late phase that uh, that you are playing at. It was the ultimate target is destroying your your enemies anti tanks right. because once you destroyed that. Your whole tank army can now overwhelm the 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 other units that are available on the field. So yeah. after this, if we keep if we read the exact changes now, it's really interesting to be honest. Okay, so damage increased from 110 to 120 for AT grenades and sticky bombs. At Veteran yeah. C2, Panzerfaust and AT grenades deal plus 40 damage. Wow, that's that's huge. Sticky yeah, bomb. Yeah, like now plus. But now it will be like 100, 160 total damage at veteran C2. Wow. It's like really, it's like, it's like an anti-tank shot. Yeah, that's, that's, that's really cool to see. Sticky bomb and AT grenade speed increase from 5 out of 15 to 10 out of 20. Okay, that's actually, that's actually pretty good too because I don't know if, I know you know this, Hunter, but um, I don't know if a lot of players realize this, but if you throw two, so, so the most well-understood aspect of anti-tank grenades is if the vehicle is half health and you throw an anti-tank grenade you you cause an well, engine damage an engine. right yeah, yeah but i i believe if you th are able to throw two anti-tank grenades at the same time you can create that engine damage. engine right even if it's full health exactly and i don't think a lot of players realize that but these changes are only going to enhance that aspect of of this interaction because you're going to have more damage, you're going to have more speed increase, and you're going to be able to, I think, close the gap on those vehicles or push them back a lot more effectively. So yeah, it will be it will be like for the players now. It will be like they will they will think twice before before like deep dive onto the enemy's infantry. Right. Yeah. And and I like the fact because vehicles are so powerful in this game, I and and this game really rewards offensive based players. I like the fact that they're giving infantry and combined arms tactics with AT guns uh, as anti-tank uh, a, a viable and fair option to kind of uh, deter these vehicles and allow you to continue your game plan, whether it's taking up to the tier three, getting your own yeah. later game tanks. It gives you that mid-game stability that you really need. Um, exactly, exactly. You know, sometimes when, when I play, I feel that my anti-tank grenade is worthless. Yeah, uh, because of because of you know, before this changes, uh, I, I feel if I don't have a really a proper anti tank, it's going to be really worthless. Yeah. And now now with the 120 and plus 40, if you have a veteran too, and now it's like really it's it's really equal to one shot from the anti tank. It's well, a quite good damage to be honest. 160 yeah. is very it's very high. Yeah, no, very cool. This is going to add more strategic diversity in the game, and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like that. So, okay, so all mobile medium anti-tank guns, the 6-pounder, the Pack 40 the Pack 38 and the M1 anti-tank guns, we're giving these a slight boost to their effectiveness by increasing their rate of fire. So wind down decreased from 1.5 to 1.25. So, I mean, that's good. In combination with the snares, the criticals or the engine damages, now, you know, you're getting more effectiveness by increasing yeah, the rate of yeah, fire. That's more strong. Chance. Yeah. Yeah. Now we have more chance to 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 destroy the tank. Okay. Good to see. Um, ultra light vehicle machine guns. We're reducing the reload times for several light vehicles to match their weapon cooldowns. This changes to limit situations where vehicles take significantly longer to fire their next burst. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It happens. It happens a lot. So some added so micro to consider in. here. Yeah, Kratchus in the uh, quarter ton, the weasel, the light carrier. Uh, usually, when they shoot, uh, they just like take a really long break from mm, to shoot again. Now yeah. it's like it will be more. It will be more useful. Yeah, very cool. 
I like that. I, lo I love how they're adding more relevance and, and impact yeah, from man, these, this, these lower this vehicles. This patch is amazing, to be honest. This patch is like uh, yeah. all, all, the, all details, you know, from Kachudzin to Weasel to everything. Right. It's Even more fundamental. the anti grenade. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I agree. Okay, so vehicle load times. The time it takes to load infantry into transports, not tank riding. No longer scales with the size of the squad. So this will speed up loading infantry into transports. So non-tank riding vehicle load time standardized to the following. Maximum time for an entire squad to enter a vehicle set to 0 0.5 seconds once the loading process begins. So I'm assuming that's based on the position of the, of the infantry to the vehicle. Is that correct? Or how? Well, usually it was like, you know, before I... Okay, now I think, you know... Before this, usually the transport, so if you have a medic truck and you want to trans, especially in 4 versus 4 maps, yeah. if you want to transport your units, it's going to take uh, a long time, depending on the size of the, uh, of the um, unit. So if you have a oh, member of six member squad, you need one by one, they enter the, the vehicle, you know? Now right. it will take 0.5 seconds for, for the whole members to get in from from the beginning of the first one who enters you know oh i see so it was so based on unit the individual unit models before yeah exactly oh, okay. before it was based on the individual models now it will uh, it will take 0.5 seconds okay. i think it will be good i think it will be good because before it was usually like you don't see someone transporting units uh, very often. Now I think there will be a lot of transportation <laughs> in this game. <laughs> Which I like, man. I, I like that. It's a cool feature and... and uh... I, I like everything that... I like everything that give you um, a more detail, a more gameplay. This right. is a gameplay. Right. When you use your sniper, when you use... When you give a chance for you to play a sniper, when you give a chance for you to uh, to to preserve your scout or your engineer to be right, there and right. you don't neglect them, when you give a chance for your transportation there to 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 to, to really transport your unit because it's now more efficient for you to to transport. Right. No, it's added micro and tactics. The added layer of tactics is so true. Like if a unit is about to die, you could immediately now just jump into the vehicle, load in, survive. Uh huh. Um, yeah. Yeah not have to hard retreat necessarily, right? So there's little things that are going to be, that are going to reward the better players. So, okay. Yeah, exactly, reward the better players, yeah. Very interesting. Um, all right, so moving into faction balance, this is this is really going to be the bread and butter of, of what we want to talk about. Um, mm -hmm. U U.S. forces. We are shifting the power of the U.S. forces support center to create better gameplay diversity where the infantry support center focused on infantry units in the manpower economy. The mechanized support center has access to much stronger vehicles and repairs, and the air support mm -hmm. center provides powerful abilities to support the existing army. We have also uh -huh. added a new upgrade to improve bazookas that allows us to make changes to reduce the power of the Hellcat and the Sherman Bulldozer combo. Very interesting. All right. So mechanized support center. Let's see what they've changed on this. Looks like quite a bit. Let's see. It has yeah. received significant changes and improvements. We want the support center to be ideal tech decision for American players who want to focus their play style on vehicle gameplay. The new mechanized support center no longer gives its base repair, but instead has a new ability in the form of designated forward repair station. Which uh, it's interesting, which moves the repair outside yeah. the base onto captured points of the map. This adds flexibility to fit into various strategies, but also to equate its effectiveness across smaller and larger game modes. The upgrade within the mechanized support center have been overhauled to give more meaningful upgrades that can be a supplement, that can supplement a vehicle heavy play style. So the that's mechanized- so sweet. Yeah, so that's more yeah, relevant. I it's gonna be on the front line, right? Um, based on where you're attacking or where you're engaging the enemy. I don't know if you're gonna be able to move this around or not, but it's gonna create more counterplay as well because if your enemy detects and spots these repair stations, yeah. he can assume you're going to be playing around that general area. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. Also, also to be honest, I mean the, the the repair on the base was like you know in terms of three versus three and four versus four the big team games. It was really long way for you to travel from the battlefield, even if you are like a bit damaged or, or, or half damaged or even really damaged, fully damaged. You need to travel a vast 
area to 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 your base and stay there right. to wait for your unions to be repaired and then travel again and move yeah. again to the front line. Right. Now it's more a practical way for you to have your own repair station. On the, I think it's uh, going to be on a point. Yeah. Like it's a designated forward repair station which move outside uh into oh. capture points of the let's yeah, see right. into capture points of the map i think it will be on the point it's just like the uh, you know the retreat point from the uh a british one i think yeah. it will be like that so here it says the designated forward repair station spawns a repair engineer squad on the territory point that heals nearby vehicles one at a time for six health per second engineers do not fight in combat okay really really interesting so frontline engineers on a point when used on the additional territory points after a point is designated, the engineer squad will disappear and a new squad will appear at the target uh, location. That's pretty cool. I understand now. It's just like, you know, this is the counterpart of the designated defensive line from the uh, coastal oh. battle group. Good point. Where Good point. you can... Yeah, exactly. So usually people, allies player, including me, when I play allies and see uh, there is a tank being d repaired on the designated defensive line, I say, well, what's that, man? I'm, I, 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 I need <laughs> something like that. I need something like that in my army. Yeah. Now it's uh, more logically. Now it's right. like, this is a counterpart. This is the allies thing. Now I can make this point also as a repair workstation for you guys. And I like that there's a visual indicator now. Instead of just a, a circle, like the defensive line for the Wehrmacht, now there's an actual repair engineer. So it's just yeah, visually uh, more intuitive overall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Visually more intuitive, exactly. It's, it's good. Okay, so uh, I think this is going to be used a lot. I think it's it's a cool mechanic. Specialized munitions change to rearm into retrofit. And retrofit, okay. So we are packaging the old smokescreen ability with specialized munitions. So Americans only need to purchase a single upgrade to unlock all the abilities related to their vehicle. So this is going to be a uh -huh. universal upgrade now for pretty much everything. I think I think that's fine. It's that's once again intuitive. Um, you're you're going for the mechanized battle group, so you're going to get universal mechanized upgrades. I think that makes sense. Yeah, uh, good that change. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, good change overall. Okay, so Sherman 76 millimeter conversion. Manpower cost reduced from 200 to 175. That's fine to me. Um, improvised armor. The cost of improvised armor is being slightly increased to better reflect the benefits it provides to American vehicles. So cost increased from 100 manpower and 20 fuel to 125 and 25. It's minimal. It's fine. Tool tip updated to reflect the, the incoming damage. Okay, fine. Rapid repair replaces smoke screen. Cost 125 manpower and 25 fuel. So it increases the repair speed of U.S. forces repair units, including the forward repair depot, by plus three health per second. So what was it, six before? Six health per second. So this is going to add three. Is that right? Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be like nine nine per In second. Interesting. Okay. And then removes the manpower cost of designate forward repair station. Wow. It's a pretty interesting upgrade. Uh, um, pretty cool. So you can so, move it around so more this, maybe. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it will be like more, uh, more durable. You know, you can change it. Yeah, very cool. Okay, so infantry support center. We're moving on. We are moving the captain into a more supportive role and adjusting the cost of two other upgrades. These changes are intended to move infantry support center from being an all-around tech decision to being more specific at supporting heavy investment into infantry. Yeah, because for a long time in Co 3s history. This has been the only viable option to open. Yeah. You most, know? most players, most uh, players go for for the infantry. Yeah. Uh, you know, just because you know, for me, in, in 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 for me, I used to go that not only because I want uh, a heavy investment on the infantry, but it's also give me a free unit. Right. Now, right. the now the, the the mechanized support center give me a free repair. Before before this patch, the mechanized and the airborne does not give me anything in addition. Good point. Besides yeah. the abilities, besides right. the abilities, it does not give me anything in addition. Now now the the mechanized give me something, and the infantry support center also give you the a captain. But now you 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 know you really can't change. 
Right. No, it's so good. So they're they're gonna basically make the captain a more of a supportive unit than a support plus combat unit. Um, and now the squad has veterancy that better reflects the squad's support role. So the squad size is going down from four to three. The cost set to 150 uh -huh. manpower when rebuilt. Mark target uh -huh. range increased from 30 to 35. Veterancy uh -huh. veterancy three requirements adjusted. From 5400 yeah. to 4400 okay and that makes sense to be honest it makes sense especially especially in terms of 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 one versus one and two versus two where the uh, where a single unit in the battlefield yeah. counts a single unit c can capture can can go can can have a fight right. so usually uh, if they don't do that in my opinion I, i'm not really into a one versus one and two versus two team uh a, a really a player of that uh, moves but yeah. uh, you know and uh, basically if you if, if i am a one versus one and two versus two player i'm gonna go for the captain uh, because it's a, an, an additional unit for me and it's a quite effective as well even you know, even yeah. and and it's more it's more effective when it has, uh, you know, the barrage ability. Yeah, very interesting. So, so now, so now after let's say nerfing the captain, now you really need to think what's your game style. It's an infantry or a tanks. Not going for the support of the infantry support center for the captain itself. I see. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna make you play around the overall theme of 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 infantry. Okay. So the sur the two different abilities that have been changed are survival training and advanced logistics. So survival training, we're reducing the manpower cost, but increasing the fuel to better reflect the identity of these upgrades as a form of alternative fuel investment to teching and purchasing vehicles. Cost adjusted from 250 manpower and 50 fuel to 150 manpower and 70 fuel. So what I like about this is the fact that you're going for infantry support center. You're going for survival training to make your infantry stronger. But that comes yeah. at a cost now of you can't also get vehicles just as quickly, right? Uh huh. So that's yeah. that's yeah. really it's. I think yeah, it's a yeah. good decision. I've, that's very good decision. Uh, yeah. Lately, lately I played like a lot of games uh, in two v twos, in addition to my four versus four and three versus three games. Yeah. And uh, to be honest, the 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 opponents, the 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 U.S. forces a player. Usually go for the infantry support support center, but you 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 see suddenly he has a bulldozer or or a Hellcat. Then right. it's it's just like you 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 will have your own tanks and your own infantry, a very good infantry, and the tanks itself is not bad. I mean the Hellcat or the bulldozer is very very a very good units, very proper yeah. units. Yeah. So now, now it's like if you won't go infantry, you really need to think about it because it's the all investment you put there. You will right. be really late and being in 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 you will be really late, really late for having a tank if you are going for infantry support center. It, exactly, and at the same time as you with everything you just said, they're also buffing anti tank grenades and AT guns, so you can play these combined arms infantry tactics uh -huh. a little bit better yeah. now. So it's. It's not like you're you're. T it's not like they're making this change in in itself. They're at they're playing and changing a lot of things around it to make it more viable. But I what I love about it's this like overall. Uh, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, Hunter. It's like multiple. It's like multiple factors coming together for you to yeah. uh, to play the the uh, the uh, the infantry style. You have a good anti tank grenade. You have a good infantry now. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I like this a lot, and and especially for the U.S. forces, because it feels like the U.S. forces were good at everything. Like, you know, their yeah. basic riflemen yeah. scaled into the late game. Their vehicles were able to match Axis vehicles. Uh, they just felt like their economy was so strong, like nothing mattered. They could always replenish. So exactly, I, I like to exactly. see more, co not necessarily consequences, but you, you now have to make more compromises for your decisions. Um, yep. So it's it's good. Yep. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. It, also, you know, let's let's say something uh, yeah. kind of funny for me here because you know, you, we will see now if someone goes infantry support center, we will see uh, a swarms of infantry because you're gonna be really floating manpower at yeah. that 
at that at that point because you're going to have a lot of manpower a kind of low in fuel so right. you where where should you spend your uh, fuel, uh, manpower so right. you're going to produce more and more infantry and that that makes sense i mean that makes sense so so i i don't want or or you know, people are gonna say it's a blob, it's a spam, but that's a natural thing for a for infantry support center player to have more infantry than a usual player or than the Axis one. Yeah, and you can better you could better as the opposing player estimate exactly what he's going for, what he's doing. Um, so yeah, very interesting. Yeah, well, it was yeah. Once you see a captain, so prepare yourself to <laughs> yeah to yeah. see. A uh, to a lot of the infantry there right Vers whereas before it was like oh you see the captain it's standard he could do anything he could go in any he any direction do anything, any yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah exactly he could do anything yeah like it's like yeah. Yeah, for example usually players go for the infantry support center and for the armor battle group to build the easy aid so you you've, yeah. we've seen a lot of in a, a lot of cases where there are a lot of very hard core uh, riflemen with double bars uh, there and there is an, a two or one easy eight in the battlefield now yeah. it's a very big big now it's a very big uh, it's very hard for you to build an easy eight uh, if you are going for the infantry support center yeah yeah super cool okay so advanced logistics cost adjusted from 200 manpower and 50 to 150 manpower and 70 fuel so much of the same thing we just discussed but uh, moving on to Weapon Support Center. So new upgrade, mm -hmm. improved rockets. We want American players to be able to use bazooka teams and elite infantry in the late game. While the bazooka is a potent threat in the early game, it does not deal enough damage to heavier vehicles. To allow for infantry-based strategies based on bazooka units to scale better, we're giving US Forces players an option to invest into bazooka at a similar cost to bars found in the barracks. So increases the damage of infantry bazookas by 33%. Costs 150 manpower and 40 fuel. So this is like a bazooka upgrade you can purchase, like the BAR, and 33% is pretty big. So, so usually this is for the um. So in the so if, like the, not the barracks, but the weapon support center. Now you can have uh, 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 an upgrade just like the BARs, but in right. the infantry support and uh, the weapon support center. Now we'll give you a 33% more damage. I think this, just as they prescribed, is just for the late game. And right. this is uh, also, uh, you know, this is also goes with your in uh, goes with your <coughs> sorry uh, infantry um, infantry um, uh, support center. So right. if you go infantry support center, you at the end of the day, at the end of the game, where where the axes have uh, multiple tanks, your infantry is is usually as anti infantry, infantry versus infantry. So you right. need something versus versus you, uh, the axis tanks. And if you if you don't have a proper uh, uh, anti tanks or proper something that counters the axis tanks. Uh, it's gonna be uh, really bad for the uh, for the uh, uh, yeah. U.S. player because now he invested a lot of fuel for for his infantry or to be in control in the early and the middle of the game. Yeah. But at the end of the game, he will be really big punished uh, uh, on on that scale. It's so a good, yeah, uh, good now. Point. Yeah, now players will go for the uh, weapon support center and upgrade their bazooka. I, I just wonder one thing, if that bazooka uh, buff mm -hmm. uh, affect the bazooka of the airborns or the bazooka of the oh, rangers. That's a, good, I, that's a good point. I'm not sh They don't specify that necessarily, so... I just, you know, I really want to know that if that effectiveness, you know, it's, just, it's a global bazooka thing for the weapon itself or it's just yeah. for the team bazooka team weapon i want to know that yeah we got we're gonna have to test that but it says to allow for infantry based strategies based on bazooka units so um yeah I, it, it could, it could be yeah, both it could be all of them yeah it's uh for yeah. the uh for the airborns and the uh the so, uh what's that so the Rangers as well. I like what you said. Basically, if a player is going for infantry support center, if he's investing in survival training, advanced logistics, and all these upgrades, 
he now has the added option of the weapon support center and improved rockets so that he can he can scale that infantry style into the late game. That's that's a really good point, and I think yeah. we're going to see that a lot, most likely. Yeah, we're going to see that a lot. Uh, we're really going to see that a lot. Now it's going to be like three to four to five riflemen with a... With uh, two airborns and two bazooka teams, it's going to be an infantry, large scale guerrilla warfare, you know? Yeah. Okay, so Sherman smoke launchers. The angle of the Sherman smoke launcher has been adjusted so the projectile arrives faster and looks less jarring when it's launched from the tank. So, angle adjusted to no longer fire at 90 degrees now fires in a low arcing angle. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, that's nice. Nice little change. Okay, the Hellcat. Too efficient mm -hmm. when dealing with more expensive vehicles and head-on fights. This change is meant to focus Ooh. the Hellcat as an anti-armor vehicle that uses its speed to disengage or maneuver after getting an accurate high damage shot off. So flanking speed is also being locked behind an upgrade as we want the mechanized support center to be the primary way. Oh, okay. That's that's interesting. Uh, yeah, so a, an added benefit to mechanized plays of, styles yeah. of play. So... The Hellcat is getting a, a long range accuracy increased, but the reload time is slowed down. And now the flanking speed with, uh, when rearm and refit is upgraded. So now it requires that that upgrade versus just because, having it. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I think it makes sense. You know, it really makes sense. We've talked, uh, you know, you, you said that like earlier. You said that we've uh, since long time. U.S. players usually go for the infantry support center, including me. It's more, it's more efficient, and yeah. even, even so, even so, uh, you can really have access to the late game tanks like Hellcats with a uh, full, full armament. You have a Hellcat right. with a, with a, a, a blitz. We have a Hellcat with an override uh, engine, so you can move very fast. You can flank with your good infantry. It was very, 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 very. Um, Let's yeah. say uh, uh, I mean, a big problem for the Axis players. Yeah. Now it makes sense. Now if you are infantry, you are infantry. You have a tank to support your infantry, not to to be both roles. You I need to that. be yeah. like one one role. Yeah. Uh, I, I really like that. And it's going to reward players for knowing, hey, he went infantry support center. I know that because he has the captain. If he does have a Hellcat, I know it doesn't have that flanking speed available. Yeah. Right. So Exactly. Yeah, exactly. just added tactics, um, preparation. I, I really like the change. And I like that it's getting some long range accuracy increase because it's going to, it It looks like Relic is adding in the Archer long range, adding in the 17 pounder emplacements long range. They're maybe starting to add a little bit more of that um, long range interaction yeah. between vehicles, which is cool to see. I like that for tank destroyers overall. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe it's uh, like it's. They are paving something for some uh, uh, extra units for the upcoming battle groups in the future. Yeah. This, uh, because you know, in the future, maybe there will be more, more of a, a heavier units with a long range. Now right. it's just like you know, they're paving something. Yeah, I, I think so too. It's a good, it's a good indicator for things like that. Okay, so bulldozer, which bulldozer is just so strong. Um, it's yeah, having its it speed. So Reduced to better Reduce. differentiate the unit as a lower moving breakthrough tank. The cost has also been increased due to the unit's high infantry firepower, increased health, Ooh. and heavier frontal armor, which is superior to that of the standard M4A1 Sherman. So, cost increased 360 and 90 fuel to 380 and 100 fuel. Speed reduced from 5.5 to 5.2. Good change overall, I think. It is good change after all. But still, you know, I think that I think what what I really like is the uh, is the speed change because you yeah. know it, it used to like through it moves, you know, it have a really good frontal armor. Uh, it it was like moving shoots them back, and when you shoot shoot at it, it's like anti tank bounces or the shrek's not using it, does not give any j damage. So right. now it makes sense to reduce it. Uh, well, let's see about that. I hope it's minimizing yeah. it's kind of minimizing its role and you've always i mean for a long time since i've played with you you've always uh, made a good point of how effective the bulldozer is i mean you were one of the first players to really introduce that to me of like you know rushing for bulldozers in combination with let's say you know paratroopers right bazooka teams and so forth the yep. rushing yeah. to the bulldozer is so powerful because it 
it allows you to even deal with not only enemy infantry, Axis infantry, like let's say Jaegers with Shreks, but also vehicles. It was still effective against vehicles. Also, and, yeah. In, in a know? close combat, close fight, it's just in a, in a dog fight with tanks, uh, yeah. it's going to be, uh, it, it does damage to the uh, P3s, uh, yeah. to the uh, uh, P4s as well. It does it. Right. And, and damage. compared, as you've said, compared to the Brumbar, it's so much more effective because it doesn't need that chassis rotation necessarily. The Brumbar is so much yeah, clunkier. A, yeah, because it has a turret. You right. know, in, 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 in some, for for example, in, in, in some uh, maps or in, in some areas on, on almost each map, there are buildings where the bulldozer is more effective uh, than the Brombar because it has a turret and your units, even if you have, even if you have an anti-tank there, it's going to be less effective because that uh, the bulldozer will try to like be, be, be behind a building or or right. like a flank or or you know so it makes sense to make it more uh, expensive and, and a bit slower yeah that's good it's a good change so i think it's still viable but at least it's a little bit more still realistic. viable yeah. yeah still viable yeah okay so bazooka team the white phosphorus smoke from the bazooka team is being adjusted to be less lethal giving enemies more time to leave the smoke and still be combat capable so the damage uh, reduced from 10 to 7 Explosive damage removed from 60 to zero. So no, so no longer that explosive damage upon impact. Oh, nice. Very nice, man. Yeah. You know, usually usually I've seen a lot of players play, including me, to be honest, uh, <laughs> playing bazooka teams just to have the veterancy when you have, where you have the white phosphorus. And yeah. the white phosphorus have a really um, a long range. It really can deal with the uh, HMG. So the right. explosive damage now from 60 to 0, it gives you the time. So if you don't move your unit, you didn't see it, now you will get the punish over time. Right. But Interesting. Uh, I think it's, it's fair because Bazooka team need to be an anti-vehicle unit, not an anti-infantry unit. Yeah. And a lot of people, a lot of players, including me, we 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 were using it as a as an anti infantry unit, and it's more effective than the the infantry itself because yeah, it has a 60, 60 damage per explosive the first shot, and right. then it has a tick uh, with it. It's kind of ridiculous when you think about it, but I, I'm happy they changed that. They changed that, yeah. Okay, makes sense. So SSF commandos, due to their high command point and manpower cost, the anti infantry power of the SSF commando is below where we want it to be. Improvements are targeting their mid-range effectiveness to further reinforce their effective combat range. So, uh, looks like from what I can tell here, they're they're changing the the elite infantry for the U.S. forces to better coincide with the support center if that's the playstyle you're going for. Um, so, commandos are more I viable. So. Um, you know, because the the issue with the U.S. forces is always like, why would I go for anything else other than the riflemen? You know. And, exactly. Exactly. And, why would I go? Why would I go SSF if I have a a, a very good potent rifleman there with double bar on that right. can do a lot of can do wonders, man? So why yeah. would I go SSF? Yeah. So I also, you know, also uh, sorry to interrupt you. Also, you know, the SSF ha have the ability to to uh, to switch to bazookas now. If you upgrade, if you upgrade the bazooka from the weapon uh, support center, uh, sorry, oh, yeah. from the yeah weapon yeah. support center, it will give you extra thirty-three more damage. This Damn. will give you a lot of you know. Uh, it will be you know the SSF commander will be now. We will see this unit more in in the game. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. That if, if that universal upgrade, if it if it applies to commandos and paratroopers. It's very, very relevant. I mean, the weapon support center is going to be it's used very, a lot very, more. Yeah. yeah, I think, I think, I think, I think this will be the the meta. Yeah, the, the new meta, the bazookas. Interesting. I mean, I, I kind of want to build the sniper now, man. Yeah, because especially, especially the SSF. I mean, if you have uh, uh, infantry support center, you will uh, reduce uh, uh, the. Uh, the uh, the replenishment cost for your SSF, yeah. and now uh, when you upgrade the bazooka, so and even now the the SSF has a very good after this patch, 
it will has uh, a very good um, let's say uh, uh, anti infantry capabilities with right. the upgrade with the upgrade of the bazooka it will ha- it will also have very good uh, anti uh, tank capabilities i think the ssf will be a very good yeah i mean i mean pop- maybe my anticipation it will be a good meta here yeah no i think they're going to be strong Okay, so Rangers, mm-hmm. the damage bonus at Veteran three, veteran C3 made Rangers too powerful with certain weapons. We're changing their damage bonus to an accuracy bonus. Rangers will still be very powerful units by the late game due to their high accuracy provided by Veteran C and their innate plus 20% accuracy most all weapons. So Veteran C plus 33% changed to 27.5. Uh, yeah, it's that good. Makes sense. It's good. That makes sense. But these guys are still going to be super that strong. That makes sense. <clears throat> yeah. You know, in my in my opinion, changing the damage at veteran C three to accuracy, it's 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 you know it's it's considered as a nerf, because yeah. veteran C three giving giving thirty three percent damage. Imagine you have a have a a, a ranger with two bazooka, two flamethrower, and the other two with with a Thompson. So right. it's like a high range, medium range, and anti tank. With a plus thirty three percent, it's it's really immortal units. It it kills everything. Yes. Yeah, now it makes sense. I mean, I, I I can I can I can deal with the accuracy more than of the of our uh, damage. Yeah, yeah. No, it's good. That's a good change. Okay, so U.S. forces, infantry, artillery beacon. All beacons are receiving an armor reduction, making them easier to be destroyed by small arms. Um, armor reduced from three to one point five, so it's halved. Will now be auto attacked by nearby enemies. Okay, good change. So you you're, you could spot these yeah, and kill them quicker. Good change. And I think you know I think you know see all beacons because now the deck has uh, has new beacons. So this uh, yeah. uh, beacon now is just a universal change for the whole beacon. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna uh, talk about some of those changes as we get to DAC. but. Uh, as we continue here through the, f- the stock faction of the U.S. forces, we have the M8 Scott, which is an interesting unit. Um, you, you see f- at higher levels, you don't see it as much at the lower levels, but let's go ahead and see what they want to change here. Um, we want this, this Scott to be better at attacking defensive structures directly. So Bunker Buster has also been changed to be a longer range pressure tool, uh, very effective at destroying emplacements. Um, okay, so standard attack and barrage damage penalty against emplacements and bunkers removed. Bunker buster range increased from 50 to 75. That's a 50% increase. That's that's a lot. Um, so bonus damage decreased to 33%. Uh, recharge time reduced from 60 to 40. So uh, overall, I think it's good because it's giving this unit more of that support role, um, especially well, against so bunkers. Uh, 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 Exactly. Also, it give you, you know, so sub, it, will, it will give you a lot of, uh, you know, okay, if I see a coastal from the beginning, so it's maybe my time to go for the M8 scout to yeah. take the, you know, to uh, M8 uh, scout. I, I have a veteran C here. I can go for the bunker buster so I can be no longer be uh, uh, annoyed by the bunkers there, a lot right. of bunkers there. So. So it, it 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 will be like counter for the uh, for the um, coastal. There. Yeah, I think it's cool. I I, I love I love where, where in Co three there are so many options for build orders based on the battle groups or the factions compared to previous games. Um, so having that added option as a counter, uh, I think is important because bunker spamming, as we saw early on in. in in the expansion, it's like a cancer, man. It's like a cancer, it just like, grows yeah. and grows. <laughs> yeah, it grows. Yeah, it's like a cancer, and you really need, you really need a an early unit because you know the only bunker buster uh, uh, allies have is the uh, Sherman one, the right. Sherman uh, vet, vet one ability. Uh, yeah. It has the incendiary and the bunker buster. So yeah. now it gives you an early access for a bunker buster because you know Italian Coastal Reserve have an early access to the bunkers itself. Right. So exactly. you really need an early bunker. You really need an early anti bunker unit. Yeah. Oftentimes AT guns the, are, are not enough. They're they're, they're vulnerable yeah. and and you they're know. vulnerable and and you need you really need a an, an, a direct shot. You know some 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 players you you. 
used to use uh, their bunkers behind the building and it will be more even right. more frustrating for you to to destroy that bunker so yeah. now with the m8 scout you will have more chance to destroy that medic bunker or the retreat bunker that the italian coastal reserves have very good okay so the M4A1 Sherman medium tank is going to be reduced from 360 cost to 340. Very minor change. That's fine. Um, 75 millimeter half track accuracy has been increased to allow the 75 millimeter to be better at tracking my vehicles. Yeah, I agree. It's good. I agree. Good. Oh, the motor pit. This thing is so annoying, man. <laughs> yeah, thing. man. Jeez. Motor pits. It was are, the... Yeah. Yeah. This thing was impossible to kill. It's just ridiculous. It's impossible and, and it was like it's super meta, not meta. It's super meta. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, as uh uh Freyfra says, the meta slaves were loving this thing. But uh yeah. motor pits are are Let's having see. their health yeah. reduced to better reflect their role as an indirect support unit that needs to have a front line to be effective. We've also greatly increased the veterancy requirements which was far too low. So health decreased yeah. from 640 to 480 and the veterancy mm -hmm. requirements increased pretty dramatically as you can see from 480 to 1200 yeah. for for vet 1. That's this it is good. It makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense because uh, you know it gives you a chance to destroy it because once the uh, the mortar pit reached veterancy 2 it was really impossible to kill because I think veterancy to give uh, a health bonus, a health increase the health. Right. So yeah. so now it makes sense. Now now it makes sense. Now it will be more. We will see more torpits, but not as much. Good. That's good. Yeah, I, I like to see them in the game. I I just I just need them to be weaker, which which yeah. they are now. So yeah. okay. So U.S. Yeah. forces battle groups. Couple changes here. We have the airborne, the airborne carpet bombing run is having its cost slightly increased to better reflect its performance. So it's going up mm -hmm. to 200 munitions, um, which is still, in my opinion, f a fair price for this thing. It's not that expensive still. Um, uh, and then it's going to be spread between planes, reduced by 2.5 to 5 meters, increases the grouping of the three separate bomber payloads. What's your opinion on this? I think it it makes sense, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I I I told you earlier, man. I call these are the weapons of mass destruction, man. <laughs> you know, we, really, especially in one versus one, or or let's say two versus two, or three versus three in a compact map like Lakila map. Yeah. When yeah. you when you when you throw a carpet bomb, it's a, a vast area, man. Yeah. And you need to move, and it's really wiping. So right. uh, uh, increasing the the ammunition, it's kind of. I, I hope I I was hoping to see like two hundred twenty five right. just as the naval bombardment. Me too. And uh, the uh, the spread between the planes, uh, you know, from two point five to five. Ah, so now yeah. uh, I think it will be like uh, a very vast. Uh, so if right. you are really direct into the line, you're gonna be hit. Right. So, but yeah. Not, but not necessarily wiping an entire... So it's going to be a little bit more spread out, if I'm reading this correctly. Spread out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's going to be spread out. It's like five, you know? Yeah. From, it's like the double distance. So you have a kind of... You have a kind of... Uh, a, a space where your units cannot be uh, damaged. Right. So, uh, you know, in, in, in let's say from my experience... The point of uh, red smoke is the first line, so you need to be near the near the uh, red smoke uh, from like a ten meter from the red smoke, not really far from it. Because right. if you are far from it, you're gonna take the other line, or you really need, or you really need to get back from it. Interesting. Yeah, it's yeah. gonna it's gonna yeah. overall it's gonna force you to evacuate the area which is their overall purpose but not necessarily exactly wipe your whole wipe. army in one little area exactly yeah. it will have uh, it will have the the purpose of forcing you to move but right. not deleting shift control control alt <laughs> yeah. control a and shift delete man <laughs> yeah it's it's, <laughs> it's not like 
it's good game design, I think, because this thing was was yeah. devastating. Yeah, it's, it's so cool. It makes sense. Now it's uh, it's uh, it, it does its rule and it's not wiping. So right. uh, yeah. Okay, good. So P forty seven rocket run arrival time sped up from five to three seconds. I think that's good. Yeah, skill it, shot. It's very good. Yeah, it's, uh, you know because. You know, usually players doesn't go for that. They goes goes for the carpet for two reasons. The first reason that the carpet is more effective, and this yeah. now, and the second reason, some players want to go for the rocket, for, including me. I really wanted to go for the rocket, but the rocket takes long time to arrive. That make the the tanks moving and uh, your shots fails. So right. now it make you know more more viable to use it. Very good. Yeah, I, I like that a lot because it's such a cool ability. It's a it's a very cool skill shot. It's effective against knocking out tanks, but yeah. you generally have no incentive to go for this, right? So um, I like to see that change. Yeah, now, now, now you have the purpose to use it. Now it's effective. Yeah. Now it's useful. Yeah, especially now at the, at the choke points, it's going to be super effective. It's badass. And it looks amazing. I just love the aesthetic and the animation. It's badass. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so special operations, the P-47 anti-infantry loader, munition cost from 110 to 120, command point increase from 3 to 4, the Sherman yeah. Whizbang production unlocked. We're continuing the process of adding alternatives to Collins, allowing players who purchase their tech buildings to have a cheap command point option and easy access to these specific units. So added as a competing choice to the Sherman Whizbang, allowing the Sherman Whizbang to be purchased from the tank depot does not have a ah. command point cost. Whoa. Uh, so. Well, uh, let me let me say it's fair. It's yeah. fair because because uh, as a you know for DAC and for uh, Wehrmacht they have a basic standard uh, artillery unit which is the Nebel and the Stuka uh, walking Stuka. Yeah. Those units uh, you, you don't really need to use a uh, a, a, a battle group for it. While the allies, the allies, even if if they were having an indirect something indirect like like the Stuka, right. but they can't use it because of the command point. Now, now it makes sense to make these uh, be builded by the command. But how many? Uh, how much command point? I mean, uh, it, unlock. Yeah, I just want to know allowing players to purchase their tech. Building, we're gonna have to, yeah, see option. that. That's the question, right? Is how how much does it require to unlock that tech, that ability? I think it's uh, it'll probably I think be free. It's a free. Yeah, I yeah. think it's a free. Yeah, it's a free because it's just it's just like the easy eight. So yeah. it's gonna be free, and it's gonna be your duty to go for the tier four. Exactly. To have yeah. it to f fast. Right. Yeah. Super cool. I I love that. Or you can Super stay cool. on tier. You can stay on a lower tier and rush up to it through the command point system, like traditionally, if you uh -huh. want. But um, uh -huh. you now have that added option to quickly tech up to, to the highest tier, the, to the tank depot, like you said, and still access the whiz bang even quicker, potentially, if you if you want to. So I love the the added layer of strategic kind of build order preparation. Um, yeah, I think it's very cool. So very very interesting. Uh, U.S. forces. Very interesting, yeah. yeah. Now it's a new, it's a whole new army. You know, the mechanized man, the airborne, the yeah. uh, the uh, the infantry changes here, and the uh, the SSF, uh, yeah. and the whiz bang. It's it's like a new, a whole new army. You know, that's what I like in 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 these changes. To be honest, whenever I see a major patch like this. It's just like I'm. I, I, I. It's a, like a new game. I'm interested. Yeah. I want to test. I want to play more. I want to do this faction. I want to do this tactic. I, you know, it's very, right. very cool, man. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that that was a lot more U.S. forces changes than I was expecting. But the faction is going to come into its own stride. It's such a well-designed faction, but it needed these kind of changes. I think uh, to to be a little bit more balanced because. Uh, I just felt like U.S. Forces was able to do anything and everything at all times, and um, yeah. Okay, so let's continue to British Forces. I don't, I don't expect okay. them to be as many changes as the U.S., but let's go ahead and see. With recent changes to the Brits, we're only doing some minor adjustments to the faction to tone down 
a few units to their roster after the recent buffs mm -hmm. to the faction. So, yeah. so to improve their performance against factions like the, the Africa Corps Assault Grenadier Rushes, we're primarily toning down the units rather than further increasing the strength of the Brits. Okay. So the Churchill Black Prince Heavy Tank Frontal Armor increased from 340 to 440. And um, they said the Tiger and Black Prince are receiving a significant boost to their frontal armor to address survivability issues. Yeah, this has been one of the most frustrating things for me in Co3 is how weak these these big heavy tanks are. Um, yeah. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So I, I like to see that. I want these tanks to become more relevant. There's nothing more fun than having your big heavies, you know, your big toys in the late game actually having meaning. Like... When you deploy I mean, that yeah. tiger, it should yeah. it should s cause fear in your enemies. It should hold territory and that's true and that's have a power true. spike. You know, you know? It, it used to be you know when I call a black prince or when I call a a tiger, it was like uh, it's it's more it was like more of a burden than of a proper <laughs> unit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, because it was like you know I I'm afraid to lose it. It's very costly. Yeah. Now with the frontal armor, now it makes sense to yeah. to like when I, when I bring it on, it's 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 more uh, resilient. It's there. I I can I can count on it. Yeah, uh, the, n now it makes sense. And, and hopefully with changes to the Hellcat, as we saw. Um, you know, you can't just be rushed. Yeah. Exactly. You can't just have a couple Hellcats and beat a tiger, which makes no sense, yeah. you know? Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. So good. I, I like to see that. Okay. The CMP truck, uh, is prim primarily to reduce the impact of the rush when players go for the 4.2 inch heavy motor. Okay. So Polston and medical upgrades now require the platoon command post. Oh, all right. That's yeah. good. Yeah. That's, That's good. You know, and in old in old game modes, uh, and in old game modes, um, the 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 rush of the Polistin as an anti-air or, or anti-infantry, the Polistin itself was very uh, frustrating. Yeah. Especially, it comes really early. It comes at a command point one, and you can upgrade it, and it does a lot of damage. So yeah. now it's just like it's going to be unlocking. So there you're going to have your early heavy mortar. But uh, you can you will not have the Polistin itself. Yeah. The, uh, the um, black. Yeah. So they're locking that behind the the command post tech, and I think locking it behind the tech is good, as you said. You're still going to have your heavy mortar, but you can't have this crazy tempo swing where you're skipping the command yeah. post, the tier one, yeah. and just yeah. getting crazy army value onto the map quicker than your opponent. So, um, yeah, I think that's a that's a good change. Uh, heavy machine gun nest. We have now added a machine gun nest to the British forces. Thank God. I, I think they're the one faction you would think that should have a machine gun nest. They, um, yeah. Since since even the duck has a, the, a, a bunker, when you go the gustatory, uh, the gustatory can also build a bunker. Yeah. Now, uh, now the British was the only faction uh, that didn't have a MG nest. Yeah. That would make fair. It's crazy. So Royal Engineers and also the Aussie Light Infantry section guys. In the new battle group are going to be able to build these heavy machine gun nests if i'm not mistaken um and i, I think yeah. that's that's pretty interesting so um okay cost humber 150 yeah cost 250 which is which is on par you know it's the same same yeah, yeah yeah it's the same yeah, yeah it's the same of the uh, uh duck one yeah so it's fairly good. equal yeah no i think it's a good change okay so humber armor humber armored car was gaining veterancy too fast as it's good anti-infantry damage allowed it to gain experience very quickly. So, uh, yeah. and a furthermore, a bug made the Humber reach vanishing too much faster than intended. I didn't know that. But uh, Humber requirements increased from 800 at Vet 1 to 1,000, 2,000 to 3,000, and then 4,000 to 6,000. So, yeah. increasingly more difficult over time. Um, good change. I, I was expecting I was expecting to be less more effective as an anti-infantry. I want it to be an anti-infantry, but not, it's so not really as it is now. Yeah, it's so good. It worked very well. Yeah, in, I mean, if you are if you are a duck, it's no problem because you can call in a Panzer Jäger at 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 the same time where you have a Humber. Yeah. But if you are a Wehrmacht, you're really gonna struggle versus that. Yeah, Wehrmacht man, but, it's constantly on the reactive, constantly reacting and and on the back foot. 
Yeah, well, the back foot, yeah. Yeah, I was curious to see how what they do for the Vermont. But the M3 grant unlock, the cost of the M3 grant unlock upgrade is increased. The grant has mm-hmm. proven to be a very powerful unit. We want players to have to invest a little bit more, which is fine. It's yeah, a little bit more expensive, fine. but just 10 fuel, not a big deal. Um, Matilda Heavy Tank is having its armor slightly reduced to better reflect its cost. So front armor reduced from 300 to 280. Side armor reduced from 200 to 180. So nice. that's good. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Good nice. change. I think this not that, is... Not that a- not that a big change, but it, it make it more vulnerable for for the anti tanks. I I've yeah. seen a, a, a one one upon a time I had three anti tanks shooting a Matilda and three bounces. Yeah, but it's crazy. It happens. It, it happens. Right. Okay. So yeah, I think Matildas in general, there there's just for me as a British when I play British, there's almost no reason to go for any other tank. Um, yeah. Especially you know when besides. Yeah, it, it's crazy. Yeah, besides man. the Matilda. Yeah, it's just so effective. It's so strong, so resilient. Um, but yeah. yeah, I think this is going to change now with snares, with AT guns, with the reduction to their armor. Um, you know, there's going to be more more ways to deal with this. But um, going on to British battle groups, only one change here: the British armored battle group, the Churchill heavy tank, changed from a unit call-in to a production production unlock that is available through the. The company uh, command post. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Okay. So cost yeah, set to 440 and that's nice. So you're no longer able to skip tier three and just rush this out, start spamming them. Yeah, rush this out. Yeah. So you're going to have to pay that 100 fuel for the command post, the tier three building, then uh, unlock this tank. That to me makes sense, right? Um, it makes sense. Oh. Or yeah. they can, or they can lock it like Po two. They can lock it to the tier four as well. So you can build tier four to uh, to have your your uh, Churchill. But yeah. you know this is more more uh, more practical. Being you know building it, it's more practical than calling it. Since yeah. since you know because now it will give you a chance for for you uh, to uh, uh, you know before this patch. It was like either Black Prince or a Churchill. And if you are calling a Churchill, you need to wait to call in an, another Churchill. Yeah. So now you can, you know, you, you really can build it. And it's, it's nice. It's a good change. Okay. So um, Dak is receiving several changes Dak. to level off some of their power spike in the early game by reducing the performance of their specialist infantry while increasing their power in the late game by giving them easier access to their final tier. And the options from armored reserve. So, um, okay. Hunter, you're the DAC specialist here. I, I think it, this is going to be very interesting to hear your perspective on this. But um, the 2.5 truck can now convert into medical trucks for a 50 munition cost. Um, armored reserves. We're further adjusting armored reserves by adjusting prices. We're making most of the call in cheap on manpower as Africa Core struggles for the resource in the late game rather than fuel. Uh, okay, we're also giving the Tiger a substantial cost reduction as it is a major risk for the Africa Corps to reach the Tiger uh, and then true. purchase it. It's very true. Um, and then they were changing things. I've, I've always I've always said, man, once there's a Tiger in the battlefield, it's either you are really winning and overwhelming or you are really losing and, and it's like yeah, it's yeah. no use. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now I think <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, there's no there is no in between. It's like you're really winning and calling a tiger is, is for nothing just for joy. Or 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 yeah. you're really losing and calling a tiger is gonna do nothing because there are multiple tanks right. everywhere and yeah and uh, now I think now it's gonna be more uh, in between. Let's That's... see the changes. That's good. No, I, I like to hear that. Uh, the Stug G3, the Panzer IV, and the Panzer III Armored Reserve call-in manpower cost reduced from 500 to 400. So these are the call-ins that unlock. Um, I think I think overall that's that's good because of DAX manpower uh, economy, right? It's, it's so expensive. Yeah. It's so expensive, yeah. Okay. I think it's good. It's very good. 400... 400 makes sense because if Panzer IV does not come alone, it comes with an assault uh, uh, assault yeah. uh, uh, grenadiers. So it makes sense. 
It's crazy. Okay, so yeah, yeah, and Stug three fuel costs increase from seventy to eighty. That's fine. I think that's that's pretty standard for the for those units. Yeah, Arm Reserve Panzer three yeah. fuel costs increased from sixty to seventy. Um, Tiger Heavy Tank Colin costs reduced from eight hundred manpower and two forty fuel to seven hundred manpower and one hundred and eighty fuel. Wow, that now that's a big change. Yeah, that's a big change. Very big change. Very, wow. very big change. I love that, man. Because uh, Tigers are just some of the most fun tanks to play with. And as you said, it's either win more or it's a nail in the coffin. You're gonna, you're desperate. You're gonna try and come <laughs> back, but it's, it's, it's yeah, pretty much it's over. Yeah. Very yeah, cool. Yeah. Very. I love this. <laughs> I love this, especially because for DAC, you you have the Panzer threes, which are great if you know how to leverage and use them, but mm -hmm. you don't have the the Panthers. You don't have uh, 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 easy access to Panzer IVs, so now you can you can transition to Tiger, a heavy tank, easier. Yeah, at, at least at least now you can have some some unit that can help you. Yeah, uh, not really for, when you when you want a Tiger, it's really really far. But now right. it's like okay, I can see it's not that far. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so assault grenadier squad. Due to their early timing, we're reducing the health of the assault grenades to make it easier for players. To force the squad back with small arms we've also increased the speed penalty on tactical assault to make it harder to chase enemy units and dodge incoming grenades so speed penalty increase from 20 to 33 percent health decrease from 110 to 100 now gains plus 10 health at veterancy level two Interesting. Um, nice very okay. nice yeah early early assault uh, grenades were very problematic uh, for the uh, allies yeah. And now uh now uh, only being on V2 make it to the proper uh, health again and the speed uh, veterancy also uh, increase from uh 20% to 33 it make it you know usually when you up when you um, able or when you use the ability it will usually follow the uh the oh, uh, interesting yeah an infantry and now it's like it's just like uh uh, fist to fist fight. Right. Okay. Good. It's a bit nerve. It's a bit nerve. Yeah. Perhaps. Perhaps it will make this unit a little it's bit. Not, it's not really. It's not really big deal. It's. It's. You know. It makes sense. Especially. Yeah. You know. I. I think this. I think this upgrade or this change, uh, due to the small team games like one v one, two v two, because when when this come very early, it make it's really problematic. Yeah. That's a that's a, a slight nerve. It makes sense. Okay, good, good to see. Okay, now burst theory squads. One of my favorite squads in the game. I'm. Uh, let's see what they do here. Yeah, Continue to too. have their price reduced to match their combat power and make it easier to obtain the Bretas. Our intent has yeah. been to do a deeper review of the combined arms battle group as we have with our other battle groups. However, for the time being, we're increasing the base power of the burst theory unit as we continue this work. So manpower costs reduced from two eighty to two sixty. The bread and machine gun cost reduced from 80 to 70. So minor changes, but yeah. good ones in the right direction. A very good one, because I've been a lot asking myself, why would I call in a Brazilian unit that costs 280, and when I fight behind the cover, a rifleman also behind the cover, the rifleman overwhelm me, while my unit is more expensive than his unit. Yeah, right. I, I didn't realize that, that the Bursa will lose to the Rifleman one-on-one -on -one like that, but that's the, the, a good point. On-one-on-one. On one. So now it makes sense. At least now it's, it's, it it's really makes sense. Yeah, and, and 260 is cheap. Uh, you are you know, you look at the new Aussie Light Infantry section from the British uh, Battle Group, and that costs 300 manpower. Um, and it doesn't necessarily oh. have the mobility of the Bursa area. So I, I think 260 for this unit... Is very very good. Um, it's very good. Yeah. It's going to give you that early game uh, tempo and, and combat power uh, to gain an exactly. advantage. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Uh, Panzer three whole machine gun. Um, this change gives the Panzer three whole machine gun tracking that is closer to those used by the other ally and Axis vehicles. So the whole machine gun tracking left to right three to ten. Whole machine gun firing cone increase from ten to fifteen. Hunter, what do you think about this? Well, uh, it's minor. Cool. It's just minor, right? It's cool. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, I think it's just going to add a little bit more uh, standardization, you know, like the other vehicles, like they said, which is good. 
um, yeah, for I consistency. think it's you know because because our deck has uh, you know the uh, what's called the ability from the uh, armored. Uh, uh, I don't remember the the exact ability. It was yeah. as the ability from the armored battle group when you have one hundred uh, uh, damage increased by the hull. Oh, so I, I, this, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, so I guess so this now, is just for that reason, right? To make it yeah, on par. Okay. To make it on, on not not really overpowered. Okay. All right. So Panzer Command, we are further reducing the cost of the Africa Corps' final tier structure to better reflect the units that are available. So cost reduced from 300 manpower and 120 fuel to 200 Whoa. manpower and 100 fuel. Wow, that's the huge nice. change. That's 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 that. This change also affects the tiger because you know. Uh, now you have 100 uh, manpower oh, yeah. on your pocket, and it ha you have two, 220 fuel also on your pocket. Yeah. So that's, this change also, and it makes sense. Now we will see a lot of P3s. <laughs> <laughs> Which I like because I know, I know we, we've, we've said this for a long time, and, and a lot of top players feel this way. What is your incentive for going for the final tier at, for DAC? I mean, you're you're always it's always at a high cost because it's better to stay in tier two um yeah and that's it, true. it feels bad yeah, that's true. why would why would i go why would i invest a lot of like 300 manpower and 120 where where i where i could make uh, another uh, three uh murders in right. the in the battlefield right exactly and, and then you're on un you're unlocking that for a 300 man power and 20 fuel, but your Panzer threes are not as effective. Like there's no quick yeah. tech to the tiger. Yeah, you can't, you can't fight, you can't fight a, a, a Hellcat on, or even even Sherman bulldozer, man. Yeah. You know, you, yeah. you can't really damages one Sherman bulldozer with uh, one uh, P three. So you need to stack them, and if you really need to stack them, you need to, you you need the tier four to be kind of cheap. Yeah. And this goes back to their initial statement. They said that the Africa Corps is receiving several changes to level off some of their spikes in the yeah. early game. So, like, yeah, what, what, what and we're giving them a, a late game uh, exactly. uh, capabilities, which is great because before, in order for the DAC to really come into its power and snowball, you had to have a perfect early game and snowball that True. so that you could have a good late game, right? You had to really Yesterday, have a man. tempo. True, very true. Yesterday, I told Tira, I told him that uh, if you really want, you know, DAC is only good if you don't lose a unit. Right, exactly. <laughs> you have if to if you don't lose a unit, because, exactly, because once you're lo losing a unit, it means you are delayed in, in, in something else. <laughs> yeah. It's not like, you know, it's not like other factions, it's okay if I lost, like, Rifleman. Well, it's okay, man, I'm going to make another one. It right. does not affect me much. Yeah, the but economy now, is since different. The, yeah, the economy is really different, man. Now, yeah. you know, with the, this tier four change, the uh, the Panzer Army com command change. Yeah. Now it's give you a little bo more chance, especially let's say for 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 medium players or not really high skilled players, where where you know where there is always losing units in in the game. That you will not always preserve your units. Yeah. So it would be very punishing for DAC players uh, uh, that will play the game because they want to make more infantry, and now it's time for you to make tier four. But you can't make tier four. But you know, if you make tier four, you will be in a shortage of infantry. Now it makes sense. It's no, really, it's yeah, it's really nice. Very good change. It's really nice. Okay, so Panzerjäger squad. These changes lower the speed of the second and further volleys depending on distance to the target, giving vehicles more time to escape. Um, mm -hmm. So okay, that's good. I think that's that's just gonna. Yeah, add. it was overperforming. Panzerjäger's kind of was overperforming to be yeah. honest. Yeah, which I, I I agree. I like this change because they're so available now. They shouldn't also be overperforming. Um, okay, survival package smoke launchers uh, now cost twenty five munitions per use. And uh, um, yeah, that's it was, fine. It was for free. Yeah, yeah, it was for free. Yeah, that's, that's and it fine. was it was for free, and it was OP because once you unlock it, it's it's like it's like you know, Spam it. 
I'm gonna. I'm exactly. Yeah. Because you know, Dark, Dark is a vehicle. Is a vehicle army. So uh, every vehicle has a smoke, and you can you can smoke everything, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's just gonna make you have to be more tactical and deliberate on how you want to use your smoke yeah. and True. not abuse it. True. Good change. Good True. change. Okay. Walking Stuka rocket launcher barrage wind down reduced from 0 0.5 to 0 0.25. What's okay. the meaning of that? So the barrage, um, I think, I think what this means is the, the, you know how when you, when you Stuka, it's, it's a pretty wide radius and then it gets a little bit smaller or th the way that yeah. it hits, I think it's saying that it's going to reduce that. Um, or it's talking about the, um, wind down. the wind. Yeah. I'm not quite sure if that's the actual how the shots are made or if it's the actual reduction of the um like accuracy or maybe or maybe, uh, maybe it's wind, wind down like time to set to shoot your your rockets i don't know oh you you might be right the barrage wind down it might be the 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 turning of the of the vehicle and the actual yeah, uh, launching of the rockets yeah the animation yeah the animation where the vehicle yeah. is just like you know changing their 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 angle to shoot i think you're right actually the wind down reduced they kind of worded this weird, but I think it, you're right because it, the animation forces the um, the rockets to actually point upwards, right, and then fire. So maybe this is going to be yeah. cut in half. Okay, that's good. Just making it more responsive yeah, to your command. Yeah, exactly, more exactly more responsive and, and more useful. You yeah. know, uh, after the, the the last nerf from the four, you know, like four patches ago, it was like nobody used the Stuka. But now I think it will be kind kind of back, kind of balanced now since it, it launches uh, faster. Okay, good. All right, and then the last faction, last but not least, the Vermacht. Vermacht. Um, we are targeting several Vermacht units for improvements to better diversify their build orders and strategies when not going Luftwaffe company, either through extended infantry company play or Panzer Grenadier company. We also want the Vermont upgrades okay. to be useful for players, for the player when they go for battle group units. We want the faction to be less reliant on Jaegers, Werbelwinds, and Martyrs, but rather than nerfing these units, we want to increase the power of other units to the rush. This is such an important thing um, nice. when it yeah, comes to balance. Nice. You don't want to make units worse and, and irrelevant. You want to improve other units and make the the, the yeah, options exactly, viable. Exactly what, what, what you said when they uh, kind of buffed the SSF. I yeah. mean, you said, why would I go SSF if I have a, a, a really a wide-scale rifleman into, into the late game? Right. So by, by, by buffing the SSF, now we will see a variety in, 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 exactly. in the game itself. Yeah, which is so important because the Wehrmacht in particular oftentimes is, is forced into Luftwaffe company and uh, for Ooh. the Jaegers and the Werbelwinds. And, and it's unfortunate to see because it's so reactionary. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm happy. I, I want the Wehrmacht to have a more proactive optionality where they're not just reacting to their opponents, but they're actually able to take their own lines of play. Um, yeah, like take the first uh, or take the first initial. Yeah, yeah. So we'll let's see. Officer quarters. We're making the officer quarters affect battle group units previously the Wehrmacht was the only faction whose upgrades did not synergize with their battle group this should open new strategies with the officer quarters so i love that uh, infantry company affects falchion pioneers artillery officer and coastal reserves um, uh, nice panzer grenadier and lufafa company affects stug assault gun eight red armored cars falchion Jaegers, the west uh artillery panzer IV command lg 48 t gun 88 and the flak 38 emplacements and then the Panzer Company affects the Panzer Tiger, Company. Panther, Obiche. So, Obiche. Yeah, very cool. So now, now, yeah, now the 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 veterans upgrade. You know, each each uh, veteran each uh, building each yeah. tier has its, its own veteran upgrade. The officer quarter, it's called. Right. So it, it, uh, previously it was affecting only the unit uh, on the tier. Now it will affect uh, everything on your on your. I battle love that. Group. I love that because I really did not like going for officer quarters very often. Um, True. Me too. Yeah, me too. I mean, why would I use it if I'm, I'm if I'm using a Fulcher Mega, for example? Yeah, yeah. I think. It's or or why fantastic. would or why would I use it? 
or why would I use it if I'm if I have uh, like three or two w wispy? Why why would I use it? Like right. uh, now now it makes sense to use it. You know more more uh, health or more uh, or, or or more veteran uh, abilities that I can have. Yeah, I I really actually love this change because when I look at it now, you you can make that initial investment in the first officer quarters, and you can really bolster your early game play, or you now have the option to really dig into tier two, whether it's tier two or two point five, the Panzer Grenadier or the Luftwaffe company. There's, I mean, look at how many units it affects. There's a lot of units yeah. here that are affected by it, <laughs> you know. So you you really have a lot of options. Um, one thing that I'm really interested in is, uh, I know it's not necessarily very strong, but I've always been interested in like skipping the last tier and going for two, the two tier two buildings, the Panzer Grenadier and Luftwaffe Company, opening both of those tech paths uh, and then playing around the battle group at the same time. Um, yeah. You know, things like that. Like you've always said sometimes in games, hey, back tech to Panzer Grenadier Company, grab the Nebel. uh, the Nebels. So even, you know, even going for Luftwaffe Company, going for the Werbels, the, the Jaegers, you know, you've oftentimes said, hey, we, we need a back tech to Panzer Grenadier Company. And now if you're going for the officer quarter for tier two and you're going for the tier two uh, side tech, you, you open up, a, a wide range of units at your disposal that are benefited oh. from it. So it's more universal. Oh. It's very interesting. Uh, I'm curious to see, to see that. Um, but yeah, a good change overall. It's adding more build orders to the game, which adds complexity to the strategic uh, depth of the game, which is good. Uh, okay. Panzer command. We're reducing the fuel cost of the Panzer command to match the price of other tech structures. And recent changes that require either Panzer Grenadier or Luftwaffe Company to be constructed. So, fuel price reduced from 130 to 110. It's a good that's change. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Very nice. On par with the other um, changes as Five well. Five years to grow. Yeah, 1.25 to 1.33 capture rate bonus. So a little bit quicker. Um, yeah, or, maybe or, maybe this change maybe this change will make the players not building the kitten. Yeah, you know? right. Yeah, it's a little bit slower. I'm sorry. I, I misspoke there. Um, okay, so... Grenadier squad. The grenadiers, yeah, yeah, we're improving the performance of Grenadiers at short range to make charging Grenadiers more difficult in the early game. Um, while improving their scaling into the later stages of the game with veterancy along with significant boosts to their support ability. Area effect healing will now allow vet veteran Grenadiers to keep other units on the field while... Imp Improved Panzerfaust range will make it harder for vehicles to push. Okay, so a lot That's of right. changes here. Yeah, the Car 98 accuracy increase, Panzerfaust reduced cost, Veteran C2 accuracy bonus, uh, Veteran C1, Veteran C3 Panzerfaust uh, range bonuses, medical kit Whoa. changes to area of effect heal. So he it it's area of effect healing it's now. Like a, yeah, it's Damn. like a medic station. <laughs> yeah, so now this is like a full on support unit as it's as it's been reinforcing now healing look, look and, and heal while moving damn dude this looks interesting now i yeah, love well, i love that it makes sense because usually players never go for grenadiers man yeah it exactly was the, the only way the only the only purpose for you grenadiers if you want a panzer uh a Panzer Faust, if you are like scared from a uh, light vehicles that come f very early uh, from the Allies, or you can you 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 just take it, you just build it to uh, replenish other uh, units like uh, your Panzer Grenadier or or your Jaegers or even your MG. Now it's it's gonna be a core combatant. It's gonna be like I'm I'm here. I I at least I can face the rifleman, not overwhelm it. Not gonna be uh, face to face with it, but I can be there. Yeah. Usually, the the the, the grenadiers wasn't there, man. I mean, it was pointless to build it. Yeah, no, I agree. It's very very cool. I I, I love to see that because the grenadiers are just such um, they're such a, a useless unit. They were very defensive, very reactionary based. But I I, yeah, I like yeah. to see this as an option for Vermont players. Um, Grenadier assault package upgrade cost reduced from 50 to 45 munitions. Okay. Reduced, yeah. Yeah, it's it's a little little buff. 
Um, Panzer Grenadier Squad are getting a gentle increase of lethality at medium range and are getting a significant boost to their bundle grenades, making them uh, making their lethality Whoa. higher. So that's that's good. Uh, STG mid range slightly increased to two twenty two point five. Bundle grenade mm -hmm. or bundle grenade mid damage uh, increased from zero point four to zero point six two five. So that's a that's a almost what 50, that's, uh, over fifty percent. Yeah, well the pan the Panzer yeah the Panzer grenade range is uh, sorry the the Panzer grenade uh, uh, Panzer grenadiers grenade was the best grenade in the game uh, after you know or with yeah. the uh, air airborne grenade. Right now this grenade will be now you really need to think. Not twice, but thrice or five times. If you are facing a Panzer grenade, uh, really, really yeah. going to be. <laughs> yeah, and and I like it because yeah. this unit is so expensive. What is it? Three sixty. It is. Or something it's like three, that. Yeah, it's either three sixty or three forty. Yeah, yeah, I don't remember it's actually. So expensive, and um, you know, yeah. y you want. The, the the lethality of this adjusted. grenade yeah exactly yeah. it need to be adjusted to be like uh, i really you know i i paid a lot on this unit and i need it to be useful exactly right so very cool to see um never for 42 rocket launcher can no longer stack fire damage on targets this changes to reduce the massive damage caused by fire on units such as team weapons so fire damage no longer stacks units in multiple flame patches from never one okay that's good yeah you can't just burn someone to hell right this is gonna make it a little bit a little <laughs> yeah, bit easier. Like if you, yeah, yeah like if you enable one one location with with, with two nibbles it's gonna be it's gonna be a hell on earth yeah now it's yeah. gonna be less okay good i like to see that the stug 3 assault gun is having its reload speed and penetration improved allowing the stug to be better combatant against vehicles so um reload speed decreased from 3.5 to 3 Long range penetration increased from 140 to 160. That's nice. Yeah. yeah, that's nice. Yeah, so okay, the Stug. I mean, you you've never been a fan of the Stug for the Wehrmacht. Uh, uh, because of this, man. Because yeah. it was, you know, uh, the range was not that good. The penetration at at higher, you know, it's a fixed turret anti-tank yeah. or or a tank hunter unit and it does nothing to the tank itself. After right. after this after this, you know, the area of effect corrected and long range penetration increased, also the, the reload speed. So now if you have two or even one, you can rely on it as an anti tank fixed or a tank hunter unit. Right. No, it's it's you know? so true. Yeah. So I I'm happy to see that. It's gonna give you that option to play the Panzer Grenadier company more or at least stay on that also, tier. Also there is a there is a, a, a nerf. The area of effect model damage limit decreased from three to uh, one to two. Yeah. So you know the veteran, the veteran, uh, the vet one ability of the uh, Tug <coughs> was a, a, a high explosive uh, shell on the infantry in, in a close range. Right. It was really, uh, really doing a high damage. So now it's a nerf. Uh, so as you know, like making your your stug is an anti tank more than a, of an anti infantry. Very good. Okay, Jaeger Light Infantry Squad. We are slightly increasing the damage per second on scope rifles to allow upgraded Jaeger squads to have more combat power with the reconnaissance package. So the G forty three scope accuracy increased from eighty. Uh, okay, so it's the it's the seventy two to seventy eight and sixty nine to seventy five. So this is. Not necessarily going to be. This is very nice. Yeah, it's it's good. This is very nice. You know, because you know, like when I build a Jaeger, if I, I should I go Shrex or or the Scout? Uh, everyone goes for the Shrex, Shrex. because yeah. the, uh, because the Scout does not have the anti infantry capabilities, and, right. and now they increase the uh, accuracy. Now you will see. No, no, no. Now, like you will see a good investment on that. Now we'll we'll will give you like okay, maybe I should make like two uh, Jaegers with a scope and taking up and calling my murder my murder as a, as an an anti tank unit or a tank hunter unit, and I can use this uh, light uh, infantry Jaeger light infantry as a, as my 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 main front line unit. Very now good. I can rely on it, you know. Yeah, no, it's it's very very cool to see. Um, okay, Flak Panzer IV Verbal Wind is getting an adjustment to be less lethal against units that are bunched in cover. So area of effect model damage reduced from three to two. That's a fine change. This thing is very effective. Nice. 
Yeah, two two mm -hmm. one. Veterancy requirements increased, so 800, 900, 2400, 2700. That's also cool. Yeah. That that, is. That's good. Okay. Stosh Troop and Squad, we are slightly reducing the cost of the Vermont Panzer Company units to reward players who have reached the final tier. So from 420 Ooh. to 380, population decreased from 10.9. Whoa. This is actually a really good little change for this squad. It's, I like that's it. a good change. And, it, and they said it. And they said it. You know, it's a it's a, a reward for the players who have reached the final tier. It's a reward. Yeah, yeah. You know, if if you manage to to build the tier four, then then you need you need you know. I already spend a lot of money on the tier four. Why would I make another yeah. unit cost four hundred twenty? Right. Like it's that, you it's know? such a good point because you don't really get in the previous update. You don't really get a power spike for getting the tier. You 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 have to sit and wait, and it's expensive. And it True. yeah. So. You, you should be rewarded for uh, that. Uh, uh, another another thing, another thing. Yeah. Okay, like for example, when I when I play Wehrmacht, and and I, I usually don't use this unit because I am, I'm relying on my 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 uh, verbals or I'm, I'm relying on my uh, uh, Panzer Grenadiers. Yeah. So why what when I when I have like 120 uh, fuel on my on my uh, reserve. Well, why would I build this? I don't build it. I wait. I I wait until it reaches like two hundred. So when I build it, and the time consuming to be built, I have a, 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 a go, really good amount of a fuel to directly uh, build a, a Panzer IV. Now it make it really encouraged me to build T4 to get the unit, even if I don't have more fuel. Yeah, you know, yeah. What I'm it's so good. Yeah, I I love it. This this update is gonna have so many more. Uh, tech paths and options. It's just going to totally change how the game is played. I think. So. Ooh, very, it's a total cool. a new story. New new stories. There there will be new stories to tell in in this badge. Yeah, man. I'm I'm, I'm really excited. The Panzer IV medium tank cost reduced from 380 to 360. Reload speed increased from four to three. Okay, so same thing. Panzer IV, a little bit more rewarding to to get to the final <laughs> tier. Yeah. True. True. Also, it's making more competitive for for you to, to just like to to face some. Yeah. Uh, because it's still it's still it's still uh, uh, more expensive than Hellcat. Right. So yeah. once you have a, once once you have a Panzer four, you are like, okay, I'm about to see two Hellcat. Right. Exactly. So 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 at least I can have now. It's more more uh, less expensive and and more. Uh, more resilient in the game, you know. Hundred percent. Okay, the Tiger Heavy Tank and the Black Prince are receiving significant boost to front armor. Okay, so the front armor increased from three hundred to three eighty. Um, this affects the Africa Core Tiger as well. So that's a pretty beefy little armor increase. I I'm really hoping the Tigers uh, are strong in this meta. Um, they're such a fun uh, part of the co franchise. So uh, it will be very interesting to see. I for sure I'm going to be making iconic, more tigers. Man. Yeah, it's really it, iconic, man. It I've, is. I've seen a lot of players that just they want to play the game just to call in a tiger. Man. <laughs> yeah, and, and yeah. they get disappointed so many times of calling it, but there's no use. Right. Now I think worse. now now I think yeah exactly. Now I think that the tiger will be there, man. Yeah, let's hope so. So the Panther heavy tank, we're slightly increasing the Panther's rate of fire to be better at tackling armored vehicles. So mark target now refreshes uh, its effects on hit. Okay, refreshes its effects on hit. Reload speed increase from yeah. two point five to three. Okay. Usually mark targets was uh, it, it's, it's a passive ability, and uh, oh I see maybe yeah. <laughs> so whenever you shoot, it's gonna be refreshes on hit. Got it. Okay, good. Very good. Okay, Vermont battle groups. We've got a few changes here. So the breakthrough battle group. Okay. We've doubled the duration of breakthrough to allow players significantly more time to raid and secure enemy territory. Previously, too much time of unit would be spent traveling to the next point. So duration increased from 45 seconds to 90 seconds. Nice. Wow. Yeah, the breakthrough, the breakthrough would, which allow you to capture and have some slightly uh, buff on your unit. Damn. Now with the 90 seconds, now you can move multiple areas and capture and decapture. You know, yeah. it's a uh, it's a it's a one v one and two v two uh, boost for sure. For the yeah. Vermont. for sure one v one two v two. This is a, actually a really good ability now. Um, 
allowing you to kind of decap the map if your opponent's on a mass retreat or if you have mm. a major advantage. So really cool. Mm. Um, True. Okay, Italian Coastal Battle Group, Coastal Reserves. <clears throat> With changes to the officer quarter upgrades, we're increasing the veterancy requirements of the reserves. We've also reduced their build time bonus to make construction take longer. Okay, so experience requirements increased. Build time bonus decreased. Um, oh, designate defensive line. The vehicle repair and healing okay. from the defensive line to reduce the versatility of this ability and force coastal players to either build more support bunkers. Okay, so Aura no longer repairs vehicles or heals infantry. And munition costs reduced from 75 to 70. So hold on a minute. Is this still good? It's it's still good because it it gives the defensive the designated defensive line gives a twenty percent uh, less damage a twenty five percent less damage from uh, army fire. Right. So if you are in the circle, and like let's say the the anti tank shot is one hundred sixty, so it will be like one hundred twenty or one hundred ten yeah, because of the because of the des designated defense. Even if the anti tank barrage. Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah. The, the uh, mortar barrage or 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 a grenade. If you are in the designated defensive line, and also uh, it's uh, true because, you know, um, I agree with the uh, repair ability of the designated defensive line because once you get the uh, designated defensive line, it's no longer for you uh, to make a, a, a repair bunker. But the healing is... I yeah, don't know. that's a good point. I, I, I think, that's a good I think point. the healing should stay there, but the, but the repairing ability should be out. Yeah, I felt like... To, 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 encourage, to yes. encourage the player to make a, a bunker. Right, uh, yes. A repair bunker. So it seems like a little heavy-handed nerf, but I feel they really want you to combine the defensive line with the bunkers and... Um, Maybe even the grenadier grenadier healing right now that is available. They're adding that in as uh, well. So that, maybe that's, oh, that's yeah. that's a very good point, man. Yeah, if you have a grenadiers, uh, it's also maybe encourage you to have a constant grenadiers there. Exactly. To uh, since it has an aura, not a single unit. Uh, and it has uh, healing. Yeah, aura healing reinforcing. So if you have a bunker, let's say for vehicle repairs, you have a grenadier there for reinforcing and healing. Uh, it's going to mm -hmm. require more of that combined yeah. arms type that, of thing. That, so. that, that, that makes sense, yeah. That, yeah. That, now that makes sense, yeah. In interesting. Okay, so mechanized assault battle group, the Stosh Troop and Half Track column, we're reducing the command point cost of this ability to have faster access to the Stosh Troop, and so from three command points down to two. Wow. Good change. I, I like it. Very, very good change. Very, yeah. very good change. Yeah. Uh, mechanized smoke launchers from raid. So smoke launchers are getting ammunition costs to create a small resource drain on the Vermok player when they're trying to escape with their with their vehicle units. So smoke launchers now cost twenty five. So this is the same thing we saw with the DAC, right? Um, the DAC. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's well, it's it's a it's very it's very fair because uh, only Axis uh, has the smoke a lot of smoke capabilities in this game. Oh, true. Uh, yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah. So. So, uh, you know, if it was for free, then it's, it's going to be abused. It's going to be a spam. It's going to be uh, a very, very effective. Right. Now, at, the, at, at you know, 25, per, uh, 25 ammunition, it's not that much, but it does. You know, if you spam it, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna lose your ammunition. So very you need good. to think twice before using it, and it's still, it's still effective. Yeah, I, li it's, it's, I like it's that. It's really fair. It's really yeah. fair. Okay, and then the anti-tank mines. This change makes the function in its intended role as improved anti-tank teller mine. Now properly causes heavy engine damage. Which the regal anti-tank. Yeah, 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 this is good. Good change. Um, the 88 millimeter FLAC 36 AT gun emplacement manpower from 380 to 320. That's also a good change. It's too expensive. That's also before. a good change. Yeah, it was too expensive, and and uh, the the guys in the eighty eight, I still believe they are drunk because <laughs> they they prefer the airplanes. <laughs> yeah. Than you know, than of the tanks, the actual tanks that are there. I still want, I still want to have a a a, a, a vehicle only toggles that right. will, you know, it has a an air, airplanes only 
so it does not shoot any vehicle or any ground unit and it it should has it should have a, a, a vehicle only right like the opposite of it. it it must be like that otherwise otherwise in my opinion the 17 pounder is much better yeah because it's the 17 so true. pounder is it's it's the 17 pounder is fixed there it's fixed on the location it does not rotate uh, yeah. uh, like because of there is an, an airplane in the field every every time you build an 88 you need to micro that 88 to to face forward to face forward right damn me why you are why you are looking at the sky man face forward face so in the true. fourth line no it's so true it, it it, it makes it much more difficult to micro and prioritize. So I, I would like Relic to change that. It's something that I've submitted to them uh, per your request, as you mentioned it from a while, a long time ago. Hopefully we do see that. Um, yeah. It would be great to see just so you can, you, you know, you don't need to be and, and prioritizing you can, airplanes. You can, you can see that by the statistics. I mean, we've seen a lot of 17 pounders in the field, but we have... See, yeah. rarely uh, 88 uh, because of this issue. Right. No, it's a good believe in, in my opinion, because of this issue. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed that review of the patch notes. Big shout out to Hunter Dak once again. Go ahead and give him a follow on Twitch. He's a fantastic player, uh, mostly focusing on 3v3s and 4v4s, the larger team games. And um, yeah, we're really, both of us are just really excited for this. I think it's a really good update with a lot of smart, fundamental changes to the game. I'd love to hear your guys' feedback. Uh, you can go ahead and read through the patch notes. There's a lot of bug, uh, AI, and animation, uh, gameplay changes as well, which are very important to know. Uh, we'll probably be covering the battle groups and uh, the update in more detail in the days to come. Uh, but if you guys did enjoy the video, go ahead and smash the like button, subscribe, leave a comment. It goes a long way in supporting the channel. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.